Sometimes I think there are only two instructions we need to follow to develop and deepen our spiritual life. Slow down and let go. Or I am mountain dreamer. That was a quote from them. And this is the Inspired Poetry Corner. Welcome everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Sunday morning. Well, in this part of the world anyway, it's Sunday morning. It's a nice winter morning. It's a bit of a nice chill in the air and letting you know you're alive. I got up this morning and I was grateful because I was on the right side of the dirt. So anyway, so good to see your beautiful faces and to see so many of you that showed up for our feature today. This is uh, the December feature for the Inspired Poetry Corner. Before I uh, introduce our esteemed colleague, just uh, you know the usual quick housekeeping. Uh, washrooms are to the side and to the rear of the plane. You are responsible for your own drinks. Uh, when we are on mic, I ask you to mute yourself or I will do it as well, particularly when people are performing. We have our feature coming up. We will uh, perform for about 25 minutes followed by a Q&A. And then we will have the not ready for prime time poets that will have up to five minutes. You don't have to use the full five minutes. Some of you just do one, some of you do two. So just know that. Uh, this is a space today where we usually don't do a theme, but in honor of our esteem feature. The vibe today is about love and light and good feelings and our spiritual connections as human beings. So um, I'll let him tell you a little bit more about that when he has the mic. Um, I think that's about it. We're all adults. We all know how to play in the sandbox. This is a, a place of respect. This is a place where you can speak freely. Having said that, if I think you're going down a very naughty, naughty rabbit hole, I will stop it. Why? It's my show. That's why. I believe in responsible freedoms. So anyway, um, this is going to be a great show today. So let's buckle our seat belts in and, and, and put a big smile on our face and open up our hearts and let that light out and illuminate the world more and illuminate each other. We're here today to support each other. This is one of the reasons I, I say we have the Not Ready for Primetime Poets. The, the, the supporting poets are here to support the, the feature and those that are in attendance today. So I'm grateful for that. Um, well, let's start the show. I don't want to do a lot of talking because I want to save as much time for this young man. And I say young man. We all know him and we, we, we all love him because of not just his words, but how he is, the person that he is, how, off, how open and, and accommodating he is. So Lanton is a creative writer, an author, who has uh, been on the poetry scene now for 21 years, probably longer than that, because maybe you started writing 21 years ago, but it's always been in you. He grew up writing poetry at the age of four, uh, then switched uh, to inspirational and more metaphysical poetry when he took up a meditative life. He's equally at home in, in performance pieces. Uh, he has participated in slams. He's been featured in, 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 a, in a number of uh, vehicles that we all attend, like Spoken World Online, uh, Gestalt, uh, Global uh, Fusion, just to name a few. He's, part, like I said, participated in slams where he's uh, placed very well. And He's performed at the world famous Eurekan Cafe. I myself have not performed there personally, but I've been on the online show and I know what he means. It's a very inviting community. Lanton is a poet, no doubt about it. But I consider him someone that she would say he's a spiritual guru. And not that he would say that, a guru in the sense of, oh, look at me, I know something that you don't. But a guru in the sense that he doesn't just talk it, I believe he walks it. In the way he carries himself, in the way he engages with other people, to me that's spiritual. Everything we do is spiritual because we're spiritual beings in these human bodies that we walk around in. So I believe everything we do is spiritual. How we do it, that's a different story. 
And in the little I know of this man, in the short time I've gotten to know him, I've been very much taken with his wisdom and his knowledge, the way he speaks, the way he uses his words, the way he pens poetry. It's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to shut up now and simply say, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor on this Sunday morning to welcome the December feature Lantern Carrier. I thank you. I thank you for honoring me. I wouldn't say very much, but I must offer my salutations to you for giving me this platform. I must say a special gratitude to all my friends who have turned up to see me perform. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all of you. My first poem is called On Truth. Snow begins to fall like flakes drifting in the atmosphere. Zephyrs blow wherever love takes them, carrying these messengers of heaven to the foliage, flowers, my stained glass windows. The light flakes kiss my face and hug me intimately. The healing effects, sometimes exactly what I need. In this noisy world of modern consumerism, I am a spark of spirit traveling like flakes, drifting with the breeze. Indeed, since I aspire for the highest, then perhaps I'm their maestro. Still, you would not necessarily know that. Sometimes I'm fragile, vulnerable, susceptible to danger, to being squashed upon like white fragments heralding snow. Truth is often just as delicate, requiring wisdom light to illuminate its path. O oh, lantern, be as wise as Solomon and as gentle as the snow. Friendship. It is tea time in this magnificent ambience where connoisseurs of the subtle art meet. The blue china teapot pours a perfect blend into cups laid out on a table for two. Amidst a background of outstanding cream, the red and pink tulips caresses our breaths with their redolence. A translucent window gleams its verdant shimmering rays as Tchaikovsky thrills our spirit with his charm. Within the symphony and magical setting, a red breast enters singing I love you to our hearts as the scones appear topped with clotted cream laced with tenderness and love. Friendship. It is like this harmonious blend of beauty and pageantry where the tea and deco merge, the songbirds lend their voices, playing hauntingly to the spirit in a garden of love divine. Kindness, soft, tender, intimate, as delicate as the butterfly is she, silent, reaching, gentle, elusive as a child's smile, yet firm, like life's sweet caress in adversity. She sits in our sanctum, awaiting the heart's prod, like strands of silk to the cocoon. Empathy and concern are our synergies, like flowers to the bees and butterflies, nestling in harmony, sharing the splendor of colorful spring. Or light, a taste of sunset and scarlet horizons, emanate in the garden of the soul. She paints the color of rainbows on my cheeks as each new dawn reminds me of a sweet scent, a redolence of human jasmines reaching out in solace to my afflictions with deeds of love divine. Sweet kindness, like the colorful moth storing in the atmosphere, freely offering its magic, like roses emitting charms without conditions, so too you come dancing in our hearts a lusted moonlight, a remedial balm for some good soul who feel the need like an awakening dawn to do the needful. We rise by lifting others. Earth speaks of my holiness like prayers, concealed within the agony of my heart's longing for happiness. Bluebirds partake in this heavenly romance, even as they chirp in distant foliage, amidst the silent glimmer of daybreak. Within a pervading stillness, 
A vista of cascading rose pink leaves elevates my receptive soul. If one can escape the chatter of unruly emotions, love will fill the silence with a thousand worth of glories. Like vermilion roses, we rise by lifting others, affect Mother Gaia by the vibrations that we offer to the world. Magnolias unfurl with pure intentions, emitting beauty, even as the parched earth grows green, grateful for the blessings of torrential rain. Where there is love in the soil, there will be radiance in the flowers. If there's fuel in the wood, it will ignite with flames of light. Gray skies devoid of the sun are not going to provide warmth. Neither will a dark night glisten, lamenting the loss of a waning moon. Oh, love, I have become so full of worldliness that my untamed mind converses with a thousand thoughts seldom listens to the dictates of the inner synagogue. I entreat you to elevate my heart so that like an iridescence of stars, I will inspire humanity even in our darkest nights. The fertile trees and foliage are awash with abundance and verdure, even as the lush flora becomes alive. The aerial vista of vibrant denseness comes to me in a kaleidoscope of beauty. Down below, a truck stands still along a clay-colored path, even as the green leaves glisten in the daylight. A continuous silent melody whispers in tempo with the surroundings, as a maestro does to his flowing orchestra, jasmines in harmony with a diversity of fragrant flowers. All is serene, calm, peaceful, there are no moon or stars here, no prance, no smiles from children lost in the naivety of frivolity. Yet I swear I hear not only the birds sing, but the enchanting melody of the breeze as the inner stillness stabs my soul with love for Mother Gaia, the sanctity of life in all its pristine glory. Holiness awakens within as crickets chant arias and butterflies dance encircling loops to the spirit of creation. The trees laugh in ecstatic verses as the forest beats the drums of Earth's munificence amidst a concerto of bewitching rhythms, whispering praises to love. Splashes of undulating white makes the ravine looks even more beautiful. We've seen these scenes before. Surges of aquamarine ripples beneath a canopy of blue sky and scattered clouds. You hold my gaze, a nature lover, watching the stream seeping through the magnificent cobbled stones on either side of the stunning canyon. The verdant hue of the foliage stands regal, enclosed, enclosed by glorious gray rock, rock walls, plus an amphitheater of magical cliffs dominating the lushness of this plateau. The harps of minstrels calls to me, my beloved whispering melodies to hearts, blending as one in this breathtaking pinnacle moment of being. I gaze upwards, my soul spilling gratitude for this bewildering light of creation. A tapestry of colors. Rain clouds are descending like a dark cluster of sentient beings. Struggles rise from the embryo, only to dwindle with passing age. All around is wonder, yet my heart is paved with sorrows. Spring rises, winter dissipates. Nature's beauty offers solace and sorrowful days. Hope pushes me in search of an unfathomable tomorrow. I toil and sleep and sleep and toil, still no beacons, no virgin dawns, no awakening lights. Beneath this murky veil, my inner flame burns brightly. Unconscious of this miracle, I pursue my own desires. Sacred duty. Forest, you are the creator's open book where crickets chant, birds recite verse, each stream a sacred psalm from the earth. 
The sunlight shimmers through your boughs, creating a luminous canopy where golden beams unchained break, break into a ceaseless revelation of your divine magnificence. Descending the winding path, your stillness hugs me closer until my breath becomes a breeze, my steps the fluttering leaves. Your lushness draws me inwards as my soul, diving deeper into your mystery, stands still in rapture, serene and silent as the ocean's bed. On long, weary days, I soothe my spirit, drinking of your grandeur to the fullest, absorbed in the sacrament of the sacred moment, while your whisper changes to the seasons. How enchanting are your creatures, the foliage is running through the silence of your seasons, while your breathtaking splendor offers up itself in contemplation, harvesting freedom and an unparalleled zest for life. Dawn comes walking on a pageantry of your radiance as a symphony of bluebirds envelop my soul, while distilled into your power and majesty, you perform your sacred duty for the spirit of creation. I wish I could feel now what I felt then. You and I, hand in hand, picking winter sweet clematis, caressing the unseen purple of the redolence on our breaths, throwing snowballs to infinitude. I wish I could feel now what I felt then. Your smile painting its magical garlands on my gaze, my hopes and dreams blossoming like radiant lotuses, nature's sunset alluring my being with its enchantments. I wish I could feel now what I felt then, heart singing sweetly in the meadow of bliss, my soul but dancing on the golden robes of moonlight, cradling my longing with speechless rhapsodies. I wish I could feel now what I felt then, your love like an arrow piercing into my spirit, a bewildering and wondrous wine, intoxicating my soul with ecstasy of joy. Yet, even as my brush longs to stroke the past, I can only admire the sacrament of the present moment. Dawn is fast approaching. My beloved is playing with every second in accordance with her dreams. I once sealed my memory to the wounds of afflictions and desires. Now you have kindled a flame of fire in my soul so I could shine like the morning star. When my world seemed lost, my capacity to sow was stultified. You came like a breeze above the clouds, dispelling my mistiness of shadows. There was a cold chill, an endless darkness in your absence. Now my heart awakes to the glories of shooting stars. Even as the fish enjoys the breath of the ocean, make me your udder to savor the milk of heaven's sweetness. Let my heart's lotus open like the flower to the dawn, for I wish to be a lover with you as my rose. I wish I could sing like starlings, and dart within the foliage of lush green leaves, display the eloquence of nightingales, awaken the flowers with magical words. I wish I could resonate like music, me floating on chords, whispering to the heart, I love you. Then I will dance with illustrious moonbeams, laugh with the shooting stars of heaven. I wish to disperse like clouds of dawn, revealing the splendor of the radiant sun, soaring like the immortal phoenix to bask in the joys of perennial freedom. I wish I could flirt like the hummingbird, adorned in a tapestry of effulgent light, kissing the cheeks of morning glories, transmitting their light with vivacity. I wish for the smile in the breath of silence, offering praises to the glories of love. If I could start my life once more, I would cherish the laughter of discomfiture and cradle the darkness of a shadowed past. If I could start my life once more, I would treasure the thorns and roses and bow at the feet of my gross desires. 
Doesn't each dawn, doesn't each new dawn follow night? The radiant spring, winter's dreary clouds. Alas, I knew not then. I knew not, but despair and loneliness. Saw adversity the enemy, not the friend. A flame of luster opening my heart to impunity. Now I feel a longing which time itself cannot erase. A lover with nothing but tender words for his beloved. My soul in ceaseless agony, agony for its true self. If I could start my life once more, I'll neither hinder nor erase the abyss. Love is busy enough unraveling the pages of its mystery. As such, it behoves me to admire, not disturb, giving back. This is a theme from the New Yorkian Cafe. You're beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful. Day and night, I see the image of thy form inside my soul, your fragrant breath hugging the serenity of my existence. Your sweet kisses, your undying love is a panacea tear for my survival, yet it wasn't always like that. I recall when your gaze betrayed the pain in my heart, puffed up with sorrow, even as the tears dropped from my sodden soul, weeping through the emotions, stabbing at my core with daggers drawn. You listened through the fire of my loneliness, sharing my despair, even as I kept knocking on doors to find the entrance to my happiness. Alas, like the deer running after its own musk, I was propelled by my desires, forgot in my ignorance that the way to peace lies within the interior castle. You came to me in my aloneness, the sweet luster of your delicate rays blanketing me in my nakedness, the fiery flames of your heart warming embrace, washing away my remorse and unworthiness. Now my thorns are all gone, and your roses of love remains. I want to hold you, blend with the synergy of your hugs, turn your heartstrings of support to an enthralling melody. You have taken away the turmoil of my silent noises, removed the isolation from mental fetters that once took hold. Now my soul dwells in the sanctity of thy sacred space where we share our delights. I want to walk with you, Cross distant lands and rocky Appalach Appalachian mountains, where the fauns and fauna whisper sweet arias and canyons speak to us of love. I want to hold you so close, like the moon does the night with its luminance, and the sparkling stars carve an unspoken thrill within, so strong that silent merges with the tremor of one single breath. It is payback time. For even as the flowers offer their fragrance and sacrifice unconditionally, so too I wish to constantly, constantly offer myself to you. Your soul sunlight has conquered the darkness of my shadowed past. We've become soaked in an arena of light to make this life meaningful. Now I can do naught but blend in you like the sparkle of diamonds, wedding and fingers of eternity, perennial drums beating the tempo of freedom. My sweet, sweet Empress, let me adorn this love of yours with a thousand bouquets of magical flowers. For you came in my affliction, garlanded me with the purest concerns for my happiness, removing the bloodstones from the light of my, bloodstains from the light of my own mirror of self-inflicted wounds. I'm nearly there. Mother's love. When I say I love you, I wish to hear the echoing of these three tiny words on perennial galaxies, extolling your sacrifice with copious tears. I know that your agony of spirit, your sleepless concern, has traveled a million journeys, burnt in the travails of sorrow, to teach me beauty and character out of your purest love. We two are like a leaf and its shadow. You, the resilient leaf, spilling its dreams on the mirror of life. Me, your shadow, that inseparable seed from thy embryo. Or tides rise and fall 
as if into a winter's abyss, yet soars again when yon daffodils and hyacinths proclaim the new grandeur and redolence of spring. Mother, I saw thy endless patience, a badge of courage, offering up your soul for my redemption, heart spilling the glory of snow white tears in your struggle, until dawn came as a solace to your nakedness, a balm to thy afflictions. I have seen your river of tears, an invisible spark burning, yet unwavering and steadfast, even in the fiercest storms. I see you, a dauntless empress, bobbing and weaving against the pendulum of currents, determined to push you backwards. But the full moon enters your core with its luster, flooding my being with, it, with its indigo rays. The heart radiates, pulling at the energy of the sun, giving you the light to remain unconquerable in the face of adversity. Hush, sweet melody, stay hold thy tongue, for this receptive vessel knows more than a thousand ways of gratitude. Each night's flicker has battled against a hundred winds, but now its flame burns brightly, more than enough to see your struggle. The old mind is gone, even if it took 10,000 sparkles to align with shooting stars. My heart's pangs has filled a million chalice chalices with teardrops, only to kiss the scent of thy radiant cheeks. Hush, sweet melody, for the songbird symphony is now a ceaseless rhapsody in my co. Deep into the orchard of tulips and peach blossoms, your sweet breath, my bedazzling light, thy scent, my supernal wine of astonishing delight. How far have I gone? Okay, so I'll do last piece because you haven't responded. Oh, I didn't hear the you, womb. sorry. The womb is the place where the light enters you, says Rumi. And the toil with today's ghouls and shadows is most certainly a precursor for tomorrow's illustrious dawn. Each strife is a building block that the supreme architect constructs with love as the cement that holds it all together so that eventually you will become a most beautiful palace, a Taj Mahal of grandeur. Do not grieve my fallen angels, neither should you be afraid. Joseph was thrown into a well of suffering, but rose again to glory in his father's kingdom. It is the nature of life to give us challenges, yet it is in falling that we rise to a greater victory. Night is not truly black, but only a dim lit lantern, just as the abyss is but a candle for the effulgence of the moon to come. Many fears are born out of loneliness and insecurity, a desire to love and be loved, to take control, yet we are free. And adversity is only a veil for the resplendent light of Jannah. Have you ever seen the weaver's unfinished work of clay? Lost in the laws of struggle, it looks like messy chocolates. Yet when it is complete, it's transformed into a most beautiful vase. Rain saturates the earth, which becomes mud. Yet the same soil is nurtured by the sanctity of sunlight producing food, sunflowers, orchids, and other flowers of the most radiant beauty. The pain of the hammer and anvil is only a necessary flame to burn our impediments into an ascending, lo ascending love. The woodman's ax appears merciless when the oak is severed from its roots, yet it is only for a season until new roots spring up with summer. The challenge of the cross appears as a benchmark for modern living. We rise and fall and rise and fall as Mother Gaia envelops us with challenges. Yet like an excellent play in life, doesn't the actor throw off his worn out robes, adorning himself in new raiments as the tale unfolds? The next time you sink in a valley of tears, the next time your eyes are covered with mists, See only the agony of despair. Do not give up. Instead, reach out to the healing rays of the invisible in whose compassionate heart 
lies a merciful handkerchief longing to dry its sacred drop. Do not grieve, my sweet, sweet angels, for your wounds are the place where the light enters you. Your scars are like passing clouds before the unfolding rays of the light of the unspoken. Lantern Carrier, thank you. Let's so unmute, much. guys. That's Everyone, cool. unmute. Oh. unmute, 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 unmute. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just transporting. It was such a treat. Oh. Thank you, Lantern. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Build us Thank up, you. Lantern Carrier. Thank you. Yes, Always such a beautiful rhythmic flow, just from image to image. Amazing. Yeah. Leave it speechless. Those yeah, the thoughts, you, these lines, you. so many quotables. Everything is a quotable. You don't have enough time to write it down because everything is. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I had the yeah. thought that someone should start a lantern carrier anthology and we can all just put our quotes from his, from his pieces <laughs> yeah. and make an anthology out of it. So, I don't uh, know how to write without images. Images are, are, are uh, one of the six words I use in writing, mm -hmm. six or seven words I use in writing. <laughs> Well, it was it it it's an interesting experience because I, I purposefully left you in the in the group as you started. So we're it's like we're all in the audience with you and then I spotlighted you and it's uh just to watch you as you <laughs> as you speak your words uh, up close like this is a yeah, it just heightens it even more. But it was an interesting as well because I almost felt like uh, we were uh, like in the theater and around. You don't, you don't have that feeling, but it, it, but you know what I mean? It's like when, you, when you're not spotlighted, it feels like we're right mm -hmm. there with you. Mm -hmm. I used it as an example once, the mm -hmm. actor in a play, yes. Yeah, that was brilliant, my friend. I, you know, it's, uh, you know, like I, as, as I said, uh, when I was initially promoting this, uh, I purposely chose to, to save you for this, this month. Uh, to be featured, uh, you know, it's with the it season, good wheel. And, uh, <laughs> the time of year, the feelings that it conjures, and and you know, I thought of you as a perfect person to 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 bring home that message of love and 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 peace and harmony. Um, mm -hmm. Seem to need so much of that in the world right now. So that was yep. just brilliant, my friend. Brilliant. Thank you. And, Thank and, you yeah, so much. And the image and the images from your words. Not just, uh, you know, if when you go back and you read the chat, uh, people are just pouring in, um, you know, like the deer chasing its own musk. That, you know, <laughs> that was, it's like yeah. out of the park. That's, you know, it's just like brilliant. Yeah. So <laughs> you say you've been writing poetry. You started writing it when you were four. Yeah, I was four years old. I've been writing all my life, really. I've been right. on the poetry scene for about 22 years but I've been writing all my life. But I give all credit to meditation and spirituality because I took a little rest. And when I entered the meditative life, mm -hmm. I find that I started writing like the mystics. Right. So, so, you know, people like Rumi and Hafiz and uh, yeah. um, Shames Tabriz, and of course my own master, um, and many, many of them, I, 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 I write like them and I experience it like them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't done the truly mystical poems. I have lots of mystical poems, but you have to be in that kind of zone because there's a lot to do with inner experiences. Well, I, I, I relate to that. I mean, for myself, I, I I definitely identify with a lot of the Stoic masters, you know, Marcus Aurelius and Seneca and so forth. But yes, me yes. And others are, Marcus Aurelius, uh, yes. I, <laughs> you know, because, you know, the standard question of what does poetry mean to you? But for me, it, it it's more... I think when we hear your poetry, we understand what poetry means to you. But yes, but I would like of, to I would like sorry. to answer that one because yeah. it comes up a lot in um, open mics, and you know I go to lots of venues. Uh, I'm not only on Zoom, mm -hmm. and the question of poetry comes up a lot. And I have deliberately written, let's say, about sixty-five poems and words and poetry alone, and every single one of them is vastly different. Mm. And I'll tell you why. My favorite definition, there are many, my favorite definition, because we mystics, we think of ourselves as souls. So I say poetry is the light or voice of the soul, expressing itself in myriad ways, myriad ways, according to the growth, development, and experience of the seeker. 
Mm -hmm. So if we're in pain, you know, and people in pain tend to write about pain. You know, some people enjoy having a satire, you know, dig at the government. So they write lots of satires. Some people are heavily emotional and impactful. Everything is meaningful. There's no right or wrong. Yep. You know, the kindergarten child um, relates to large letters and nursery rhymes and sings the alphabet. The scholar doesn't do that, but there is their significance in what the kindergarten child does and what the scholar does, each in his own right, has, is, is valuable. If you see what I'm saying, yes. well, I, I agree with you. Oh, yes. I agree. Yeah. I, I think every experience is of value, and and how you express it, and especially if, as poets, you know, we all express our experiences through poetry, and there is no right or wrong. You know, how do how does one say, well, Lantern, your experience is not a good one; it's not the right one. I always found that to be very interesting. This is one of the reasons I don't enter poetry competitions and do those things you know it's yeah. like how do i say oh lantern your poem is better than leslie or better than someone else's so but, <laughs> so your spiritual life kicked in when you when you tapped into meditation but were you always spiritual in to some degree when you were younger or? yes yes i we believe in reincarnation and i think i started in my last life because i was the only one in my family i was always following the uh evangelist everywhere in, mm. in the city and the town and villages and churches i'm an anglican i grew up as an anglican but i followed the evangelist everywhere mm. and i was burning in fervor for the christ uh, for much of my life i have lots of biblical uh certificates i got free bible as a gift for outstanding biblical studies then i came to england and everything kind of sat on the back burner and one day i was sitting at home and uh, i had two days off and a book just came through the slot. I still have it. It's called The Path, Autobiography of a Western Yogi. And I began to read, and then I had a series of spiritual experiences, and I, I just couldn't put the book down, and I just kept reading until I was finished. And uh, my whole life changed, because mm -hmm. it was uh, Swami Kriyananda who introduced me to the doctrine of reincarnation and karma and, and, and the God within. And you know, I, I'd always seen God as external. And, you know, some man up in a place called heaven, you know, long flowing beard. And I hadn't seen it from the standpoint of Swami Kriyananda and from the standpoint of the yogis. Once I understood the reality, everything just fell into place. Yeah. It's like being born again, like the Christ says, everything just falls into place. You don't have to force it. It just, it just happens. I can relate to that. I know, my, you know, when I... I started writing late in life, but I had a, a had an epiphany. I had a moment where life changed, and and not just the moment, but the invitation that I accepted of doing that internal work and stepping within. That's when things really changed for me. So that's why I really identify with your writing very much. So, so let's let's get away a little bit from poetry. Lantern the man. Um, what what yes. what kind of what have you done in your life outside of poetry? What kind of professions have you done? Well, um, I've been meditating for forty years, and Sri Chinmoy's path is a path of selfless service. Okay. So I've traveled the world like three hundred times. I've gone to fifty countries, serving, serving, serving. I've done a great deal in Africa. Spiritual life is practical. Self life. That I should point out for the benefit of everyone here, really. Seva is in any faith, and Seva expands the heart and makes you receptive to the divine light. Grace is always here, but we need to be receptive, and service is one of the things that help us to be receptive to spirit. So I traveled all over the world, really, and Africa many, many times. My last trip was, uh, uh, I tend to be a leader. I'm very, very resourceful, so I get a group of about seven or eight people, and I cross borders, I get Rwanda, uh, uh, Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, always serving, going into school, talking to children, bringing uh, uh, books and food and computers and technology, and, you know, all sorts of things. We so, bring your so your profession is to be of service? Well, I'm a nurse by profession, uh, if that's what you meant. I, I started mm -hmm. life as a clerk, then I became a policeman, and, and then I, I became a nurse in England. So it's all in in a strange way. I was always serving, even always before serving. I started. This. Exactly, you were yes. always serving. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. I, I got a lot of joy from nursing. Yeah, 
Oh, that's good. Uh, I understand my sister is a nurse, so I, I get that. Be of service to heal. So um, what's your favorite sound? Uh, I like David quite a lot. My father used to recite him like four o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, do I walk to the valley of the... That's everyone's favorite, I think. <laughs> do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death and I wrote and the staff shall comfort me, you know. God is with us wherever we are. God is, you know, it's, humanity needs to know that God is in our sorrows. He, he's in the abyss, you know. Yeah, yeah. My teacher teaches that God, God's love is so much more than our, our mother and fathers, you know. It's, 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 mm -hmm. uh, it's super... It, what's the word? Uh, yeah. Forgotten it. Eternal. Let's just say eternal. Yeah. Uh, eternal and eternal. I, I agree with you. I, I, you know, I was raised uh, uh, Christian. I was raised Roman Catholic, but I moved away from that. Um, I don't get into the doctrines or dogma of religion, but I believe in, in you know, people say God, Allah, Nirvana, whatever you want to call it. That I think we're the only species walking around thinking we're somehow disconnected from everything else, and I think. Yeah. That yes. divine spirit, that creation is in everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. So, so I definitely identify with that. Of course, of course. I have a lot of poems like that, actually. Yeah. yeah. When you travel, you've traveled a lot, uh, as you're stating. And uh, yeah. I know you and I have talked a little bit one-on-one -on -one about some of the things you've done before. When you travel, yes, you meet so many different people. Do you see a commonality within cultures and people as you travel? Well, we're all the same, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, I want to be happy. I want to be cheerful. I want to be a peaceful being. I want to eat. I want to work. I have some money to spend and leisure to travel, go places. And if you look closely at the Chinese, they're very similar to us. If you look closely at the Africans, they're very, very similar to us. Each culture has something which is significant and unique to itself, mm -hmm. naturally. But as humans, we all sparks of a higher light and we cannot be different. If we come from, from, if the source is the eternal, then our behavior is quite similar. So if I stand here and I uh, sit here and I do a poem or even in a venue, I know something I say would be resonating in something in the crowd, not necessarily because of me, but because they're also souls and the souls has all the qualities of everyone else. Yep. Right. I love the way you think, my brother. I love the way you think. Does anyone have a question before I, I wrap this up that they'd like to ask? I'd, I'll just take a couple because I'd like to, we, we need to get going, but I do want to open it up to others. That if anyone has a question, I'd like to, to ask Lantern. Yes. Lantern, love, yes. love, and always love hearing you. And, and this has been a wonderful feature. My question is Have you written? a poem which is very weighty and difficult for you on your heart that that just caused a lot of pain but you I follow a spiritual be, order it must I be shouldn't written. say that I, well I don't, not a matter of should or shouldn't I spoil, I follow a spiritual order and I've been doing it for 40 years and like anything else there are tenants and there are rules and uh, I met a young woman 20 years ago, almost 21 years ago, and I had some difficulties. And uh, I was asked to leave. And I was crying every day. And my soul was really, really sad. I could feel the tears from my soul. I intensified my prayer life and uh, I kept praying, crying. And they finally took me back. But I wrote two or three poems during that period. That's probably the saddest period of my life when I felt I was away from my guru. Wow. What does love mean to you? Love is the strand that uh, binds everything together. God and, God and love are synony synonymous, synonymous. They're one. And love is like light. Love is... Um, uh, Sri Chuma has an aphorism. Let me see if I, if I can remember it. There's only one thing that is, was, and ever shall be, and that is love. The love that creates, the love that nourishes and the love that sustains God's universe. The love sphere. is everything. And the, the crisis sphere. That, yeah, love is a very pulse of life. Yep. The sphere work so the, the same the addict, who, the addict who is pushing the needle in his arm is also looking for love. Yeah, the man yeah. who fancies his flash car is looking for love. We look for it in family life. We look for it in drugs. Wherever we're looking, we're looking for love. Hmm. And, and love is hidden in those things. So then, if that's the case, is fear then the mirror? 
Fear is a mirror of sorts. Um, the Christ spoke of them all. Loneliness, mm. uh, despair, a struggle, but we have to go through the struggle. The superior architect himself has divined, designed it. The soul is here really for development. Right. We isolate it from the divine <clears throat> and we go in back to divine through struggle. We grow oh. through struggle. That's why I said everything we do is spiritual because we're here. Yes. Yes. Um, they did, to tell you the truth, the mystic doesn't see anything outside of spirit. Everything mm -hmm. is within spirit. The mm -hmm. war in Ukraine is within spirit. Yeah. There's nothing outside of spirit. And everything is, if it's happening, it's happening for a purpose. Yeah, I believe that too. Well, a couple of more questions and then we'll wrap this up. What's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite sound? Like, what do you really love hearing? Well, we do mantras, although mantra is not specific to the path of bhakti. Bhakti is the path of devotion. So I like the mantra Om, and we say it no. in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I use the mantra Om quite a lot, and I use it as, as a song also, you know. Each disciple has a shrine in, it, in his own house. Mm -hmm. So I do Om daily, and uh, when we go to the, I go to the center, we also do Om, as well as many, many other things. Spiritual practices, many and varied. No. There are over 100 different ways to worship. But the, and, the, the chants, I like chants. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite word? Love. <laughs> yeah, I could have, I could anticipate that. I have a, I wrote a book called uh, My Guru Sri Chinmoy Life and Teachings. It's 223 pages. It's a big book. But Sri Chinmoy describes the goal of life in three different ways. But the way I like the most is this, in keeping with your question, uh, he calls it total and unconditional surrender to the will of the Supreme very much the crisis teachings. That's mm. how I like to look at it. Okay. So unconditional surrender to the will of the Supreme. So to the will of the Supreme, if you, not if, when these physical bodies leave and you are back to meet the Supreme architect. One has to strive to do it in life. There's an inner voice talking to us constantly. It's just a matter of listening. So when... You were about to take your last breath in this physical world. Yeah. What would you want the Supreme Architect to say to you as you take your last breath? I'll be more interested in what I'm thinking of. There is a mystic saying that you're, you're reborn according to your last thoughts. So if we're thinking of family and friends, mm -hmm. we come back in family and friends. <laughs> if we're thinking of God and spiritual things, we're born into spiritual families. So I'd like my last thought to be of the divine of God and of heaven. Not of the world, because it dictates my incarnation. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. Um, this has been amazing, my friend. If uh, ask a question, one. Sorry. Oh, you had. Oh, I just saw that your hand is up. No, you cannot ask a question. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to ask, what would you say to your 30 year old self now like if you had the opportunity to see yourself talk to that person 80 sorry 80 year old self 30 30 okay 30 year old self mm. that is when i i uh, joined the path interestingly enough before that i i was uh, uh, uh religious if you like but ignorant so at 30 years old, I, I was reborn into the new life. Wow. So so when so now you looking back, if you had the chance, you today, if you got an encounter to see yourself at 30, what would you say? When one finds God, one always feels that the best is finding God. You know, it's life is like a, the, the concept of self-transcendence evolving all the time, more and more and more. Uh, life is self-transcending. It's a self-transcending journey. And once you're conscious of divine, you want to keep going forward. Backward is not usually um, considered, uh, whatever that means. The experiences of the past have shaped us to what we are today. We are like mess, messy clay in the hands of the potter. 
but the potter molded us and we became a beautiful vase. So we enjoy being the, being the beautiful vase as best as we as best we can be. I don't know if that makes sense. Once you're spiritually conscious, you don't want to go back to the old life. <laughs> True. Mm. May I also ask, do you think that we can have material wealth in conjunction with spiritual wealth? Yes, 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 or definitely, okay. definitely. Yes, yes. Many, uh, I could, I can name many, many. Uh, Janaka was a king. He did so much for his kingdom. Uh, you know, he was a Mughal emperor. And uh, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, he, he lived in America. Uh, Robert might know about him. He had a disciple called Rajasi Janakananda, who was a very successful businessman, but he, he had the capacity of going into what we call samadhi, the trance-like state of bliss, um, constantly. Um, so money is not a hindrance. Uh, some uh, crisis teaching is interpreted in different ways, but we say what the problem is attachment to the thing. It could be anything. It's not the thing itself. Sri Krishna has a beautiful saying, to walk you are, enti you are entitled, but not to the results not to the fruits thereof. You should try to do your best in life, whatever you do, whether it's Rick and his computing. But if he, if he becomes attached to it, then it becomes a problem. Relationships oh. is the same. The, the pain comes from the attachment, not the thing. Well, the saying is uh, you know, money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all. The no, love, no, money the is, love is, of money yeah. is the root of all evil. So, yeah, I mean... It, and that's the thing it's 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 however you choose to interpret this life and these sayings but ultimately all these things like money are just a tool in how we choose to use it how we choose to gather it how we choose to exactly. use exactly i couldn't have gone to africa so many times without it without Our last it, trip then. cost five thousand the order helped us but we spent quite a lot of money so um so yeah Anyway, it's getting later, and <clears throat> I have to cut this short because I think we could probably all sit here and talk to Lantern all day long. So um, if you have any other questions, I, I invite you please to just uh, directly message him, uh, but we need to get this going. Can I invite you all to unmute uh, uh, before we start uh, with the Not For Ready primetime players and show your gratitude for what an, uh, an amazing... 25 minutes or so of listening to this man through his words, through his imagery, and the love that he brings uh, to our lives, particularly on this Sunday morning. Lantern, my brother, thank you so much for honoring us. Thank you. Lantern so Carrier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you are a constant. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is an honor. Thank you for coming. It is a blessing and a pleasure to know you, to hear you, and to experience your work. I think, I think Diane is showing you a uh, beautiful work. Your floating yeah. voice is from God. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank that you for sharing. Such a treat. It was such a treat. All right, guys, uh, I, I invite you to continue this, uh, you know, direct message him. Uh, if, if you've never had the pleasure of, of meeting him, invite him to do a video chat one on one. He's a he's just a great man to talk to. I know I need to tee up another time to to seek his guidance and uh, his wisdom. So um, this was such a blessing, my friend. This was such a blessing. Thank you for, you know, you know, we just went to the temple, to the mosque, to the church. We just went everywhere to the mountaintop and, and, and listened to brilliance of the universe. So thank you once again. Okay, let's continue on. Now we have the Not Ready for Primetime Poets. Uh, I believe there's like uh, 15 people. You all have up to five minutes, but not everyone. You don't have to use the full five minutes. Um, we do have a, a full card. Um, for those of you in the audience that are thinking that you might get a chance, um, um, it, just like I said, this is not an open mic. So this is definitely where the recital part comes in. So first up, uh, as usual, right after the feature, uh, we, we can kind of continue the meditative vibe with, with, this, with this artist, Alexandra, my friend from the island of Greece. For those of you that don't know, it's a running joke now. Greece is not an island, although it has 600 islands. But it, I said it once, and now it's become a running joke. So anyway, guys, snap it up. M many of you know this woman and her brilliant, brilliant work. Snap it up for Alexandria. Yeah. Yeah. 
And if you can unmute yourself again, or mute yourself and Alexandra. It's 6,000 islands. I've told you so many times it's 6,000. What did I say this time? 600? Yeah. I meant, yeah. Okay. I knew you would correct me, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The floor is yours. Can you see the graphics? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Line 11. When all I have is earth sun warming my horizons, sweet psyche, tender wings fluttering anxiously, for it is the flight that matters, dragging my aging dreams, persevering in all kinds of weather, reaching heights of Icarus, heights of the supreme, each creation immortalizing mortality, keeping it alive, creations blowing everywhere, through my eyelashes, through the skies, flames and eyelashes becoming one, scorching our weaknesses, guiding lost souls. When all I have is a dandelion pappus to blow, seeds floating through the vortex to the cerulean ethers, for it is the flight that matters, chasing my windy wishes, releasing the nails of mental prisons, drifting breaths of nature, breaths of freedom, each ideal golden energy sent into pure light, ideals blowing everywhere through my heart, through the skies, zephyr and heart becoming one, subduing the ego to service the higher good. When all I have is efflorescence blooming in my garden, a farmer of senses cultivating the fruit of the gods, for it is the flight that matters, picking my deciduous emotions, turquoise showers reviving withered hopes, chanting priestesses of protection, priestesses of safekeeping, each inspiration soothing upheaval, melodious salvation, inspirations blowing everywhere, through my mind, through the skies, incantations and mind becoming one, blessed with a power of flowing divine energy, when all I have is paper and pencil for some simple words, creating poetry between invisible gods and visible mortals, for it is the flight that matters, rekindling my courageous verse, grateful in defeat and victory, dressing ideas in armor, ideas in silk, each vision a sacred icon in my pilgrimage, visions blowing everywhere through my spirit, through the skies, matter and spirit becoming one, empowering our lives with universal fire. When all we have is a ray of a new dawn in a dewdrop, light triumphing, heralding a new beginning, for it is only the flight that matters. Thank you. Unmute, guys, unmute. Give it up for her. Wow. That was... Uh, you are... Was into my spirit. Yeah, Sandra is always amazing. Every hour of the day you hear her work, she's always amazing. Thank you so oh, much. You enter my spirit and never exit. I almost feel like I hadn't heard any of that before. It was just uh, so touching, so poignant, particularly following Lantern. Um, that was very, very, uh, yeah, that was, that was Especially inspiring. Especially in her own way, uh, she, our image is absolutely out of this world. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a struggle in itself. I mean, she's talked about it. It takes so, so long to do, so hard to do. And then the words yeah. are just sublime. I haven't written anything this time because I'm busy looking at what people have said, but uh, Alexandra knows how much I love her. Well, this is why I invite people to when I'm when I'm working with my clients to embrace the struggle to to embrace suffering because without it, how do you learn? How Indeed. do you know? How do you know? So that was that was inspiring, Alexandria. It almost felt like it's the first time I, I was hearing you. Um, to, to, to I think work. everyone is absolutely amazing, and my entire life changed since I start 
started meeting all you wonderful poets, like in entering the Zoom meetings. And, you know, the, well, you the support that we give each other, I think I've, I've never had, you know, this, uh, um, such, a, um, such a wonderful, amazing, um, holy communion <laughs> with, yeah. Well, you definitely enrich our lives. So thank you so much. And thank you for always being a, a, a supporter and advocate for the Inspired Poetry Corner. I love having featuring you and I loved having you after uh, our features. So, all right, let's continue on. Um, Sylvia, you're up. Hopefully, I, hopefully your battery and your phone, well, your battery holds out. So give it, give it up for Sylvia. Let her recite because... Uh, we're hoping that uh, her phone doesn't die. Okay, everybody, I'm ready. I'm reading a poem called The Train Ride. It's actually a peek into my childhood. And this train ride was invited by my counselor to take part in the Endicon Court talent contest and they took this uh, in the contest and they even featured it in one of the Christmas event. Okay, I shall start reading it. The Train Ride, Poet by Sylvia Ang Lee King at Poetry Experiments. As I got up the MRT train at Serangoon MRT, in came my father, a discipline dis, master. He will kill me if I don't finish my homework on time. Ask me how I learned my English. He alighted. At Bartley MRT, in came my mother, a motherly figure. She will cook cabbage rice, porridge with some vegetable, salted eggs, peanut and lunch meat, hand wash my clothing by the cherry tree, give me burn testament uh, in water to drink from the medium in temper when I was sick. She alighted. At Tai Seng MRT, in came my elder sister, who carried me around the kampong when I was a toddler, spooning me peanut porridge, watched me learn to walk each step. I fall in the sand, she alighted. At MacPherson MRT, in came my younger brother, who followed me for breeze walk at Botanic Garden. Watched him play marble with his body. Brought him to watch spiders in the match. He alighted. There are people in our life that teaches us, mow us, and make us whole. Others came to teach us lessons to change to a better soul. Okay, next I'm reading the review by my good friend Lao Chi Singh. Lao Chi Singh, thank you very much for your valuable and encouragement review. Viewer Lao Chi Singh review the train ride. Your other piece of writing is probably the best one which you have put up thus far. What is great about the particular write-up is that you included your actual life experience from your past. This piece of writing is uniquely Singaporean and showcases your own unique signature, tapping into your actual life experience and express it in your writing is definitely the best 
way to advance in your chosen intellectual pursuit. Okay, that's my all. And I'll stay tuned for a short while. And I think I really enjoy staying here. And thanks for inviting me and for making new friends. And mm. I enjoy Zoom globally because they teach me a lot of things from other points globally and learn from there and to be what I am today. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. Thanks for being here. This is our first time here at the Inspired Poetry Corner. I've seen her at other places, but, and, and that first poem kind of, the imagery took me back to being a boy in Trinidad and running around the yard. And yeah, when you talked about being caned, yeah, my dad used to spank me if I didn't come home with all A's. So thank you for that. Uh, that was wonderful. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Okay. Uh, guys, unmute. Let her know. Give us some love. Give us some love before I bring up the next person. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Always good to hear people from around the world sharing their experiences. Like glances that we're all connected because when uh, you know I listen to you and I could hear a oh, lot. My, of my yeah. So thank you so much for that, Sylvia. All right, up next, this this brother needs a lot of love. Uh, I usually bring him up in at the rear, but he asked to go early because. Unfortunately, he lost all his uh, files last night, and we're hoping that he can go get his computer saved. But uh, I believe he uh, wrote something last night for today, so I'm just honored that through the 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 the, the low vibing experiences that he had last night, he was still in a loving spirit to 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 show up today. Anyway, snap it up for some conto, guys. Uh, I actually didn't write anything. Oh, you didn't? Uh, it's okay. Yeah, but 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 it's okay. Uh, I'll vibe off my my brain. You vibe um, off. You, well, you you do you so well. So do you? Okay. All right. Um, God was with me last night, and I said, like an obedient child, I asked God why all my poems disappeared. God said that. Clouds disappear too when rain is done. Mm. So mm. I ask God again, why my poems? And God said, they are written backwards from when I first met you, when I molded you with love inside my soul, <laughs> and you were the best given child that I had ever created. And I said, why God? And God said, I created you from the mud of my most richest of, of spirits. And I stood right by your side when you were created. I created you from the inside of my very spirit. And I said, why God? Why my computer? God said, you are <laughs> one of the greatest of technologies. This one has to die for you to find your poems again. I said, why, God? Why my, my poems? I've written them for too long. And God said, your poems are songs. I've written them down. Even Adam and Eve would never believe that they were the first because you are the first to write that kind of poem. Mm -hmm. You were the first to be in that garden. You are the first out of, out of the Garden of Eden. You are so beautiful that any other heathen will never even believe that you were born today. So I say, God, what's next for me? God <laughs> said, you are going to perform on a Sunday <laughs> after Lantern. And after Lantern is done, you're going to be so fed with love because Lantern is love. Poem. Are you hearing the quiet? Do you know why we're quiet? I thought you didn't write anything. So you, like God said to you, you are the poem, you are the poetry. I'm so glad we recorded this so I could listen to this again. 
uh, unmute guys before we move on. Let them know. Like that was brilliant. Shuchima would say, "Huma, my only savior. Huma, my only savior." In this other words, is another you know, one of those inhumans that, that I talk about. Yeah. This dude is beyond. This is, this is one of those moments you're gonna go. God, I was glad I was here for this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad you did this at, at, at the Inspired Poetry Corner, man. That was brilliant. But we were talking last night and he goes, guess what? And I go, what? He goes, I lost it all. I lost it all. Yeah, I lost it all. I go, you lost what? He goes, well, my poems, everything. I go, and then we were talking and I go, well, all things happen for a reason. We don't always know what the reason is. All but... things happen for a reason because I listened to Lantern and yep. after Lantern did what it did. Yeah, now I understand that I'm okay, you know. I'm See, the poetry, okay. the poetry is not on your computer. The poetry is in you. It's probably, it's it's probably on the hard drive. Ubuntu. You see this? You see this? Ubuntu, there you go. University yeah. of Life. Yes. Ubuntu means I am who I am because you are. There you go. Yeah. Well done, brother. Spirit well, of humanity. Well, as much as we say that, I know it would be nice to uh, for you to get your stuff. So I know you have to head out and, and hopefully, hopefully they can retrieve it because all yeah. kidding aside, it, 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 it's, it's frustrating. I, I've had that happen to me and I was fortunate they were able to save like 90% of what I had. So, and the others that, that I couldn't recover wasn't meant to be. So Thank anyway, you so I love you from the depth of my heart. And uh, since I'm in Toronto, we got to meet up. Yeah, we'll connect. Well, we'll talk later today or tomorrow. I know Marianne's in town as well, so we'll all get together. Yeah, 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 yeah. One love. Yeah. All yes. right, brother. Yeah. One love. All right, guys. Give him some love as he goes to uh, to battle the demons of the computer. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is. You know how to get me, man. And switch yeah. to Mac. Windows are trash. I'm telling you, <laughs> me so many times, Windows are trash. Switch to Mac. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, so, Macs are good. Just don't uh, drop water I'll, on the I'll keyboard. Stay, so I'll, I'll I'll stay for a few more poems. All right. Uh, to give respect, I'm I'm not gonna just dish out like that. Well, uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate. Well, thanks for you know, thanks for being here. Like I said, I told you last night. I would understand if you, you you know you didn't want to, but I appreciate you showing up. I know Lantern is a fan of yours as well, so thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much, brother. All right, uh, this young woman coming up is uh, first time to do the Inspired Poetry Corner. I have heard her before, but I'm really looking forward to hearing her stuff. I know she wanted to come and support our features, so I'm always grateful for that. Anyway, guys, snap it up for Laura. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here, and uh, sorry I haven't been before. <laughs> Okay. Um, I have two short pieces to read, and uh, the first one is called Children. You will gather children, those you seeded and not, from the fields and cities, from the very air. You will gather them because it is pre predestined to meet them and share. Love is a commodity in great demand. Attention is a precursor to giving a hand. Be not timid, be bold, be generous. Walk the road knowing the paths will connect. From the east and west, the north and south, they'll arrive with questions, with avenues for advice, with grief and joy. They'll arrive from all continents. They'll arrive with contests and baskets. They'll arrive with a boat for the future. There may not be a place for you on board, but there will be space for your spirit, your offering 
to those who sail. And thank you. The next piece is a golden shovel, if, if you know what that form is, where you, take a, you can take a first line from a poem, and I took one from um, Sonnet 43 of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And uh, what you do is you write your own poem, and the last word of each line is going to be the order of the words in Elizabeth Barrett Browning. So how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. And those are the last words in order. And this, yes, is lighthearted. In that first lunch date where we arrived at exactly the same time, how could I know that this was the fried green tomato <laughs> moment? Do you remember how we harvested the fruit in August, heat in your garden? I remember the poem you read when you first called out of the blue. Is love really more than the smell of hot grease frying on the griddle with thee? Is it more than ketchup on fresh warm French fries at Dirty Martin's comeback? Let me hear the milkshakes roar, served by aging waitresses in 1960s hair. Me, I remember that day too. The first time we kissed sitting on the cat scratched couch. Count the workmen eating burgers and paint dripped overalls. I count on your phone calls. I count the evening sitting across a hot stack of pancakes from you, knowing I was waiting for you always. Thank you. Wow, Laura. Wow. The imagery in your poetry. Wow. Give it up for her, guys. Wow. Oh, my Lord. I felt like I was sitting right there eating those flapjacks with you waiting to, for you to kiss that. <laughs> Laura oh. is a very beautiful poet. Oh. Exquisite, exquisite. Thank you, Lantern and all. I'm so glad. She was one of the first to buy my books. I, I remember her with such love, such love. Uh, I could see why. That was two beautiful pieces. And uh, just the imagery, the storytelling behind it. It made it like... It's like you just pick us up and put us right in the middle of your story and go, okay, watch what I'm going to do now. That was good. Well done, Laura. Well done. Thank you for coming and you're welcome here anytime, anytime. All right. Up next, um, first time uh, uh, presenter as well, and she hosts her own open mic. I, I hope I'm saying it correctly. It's a guest, uh, guest all open mic. But uh, many of you, sorry? <laughs> I just said guest all. Guest all. But <laughs> many of you know Amy, and I'm so honored to, to have her here, have a fellow uh, organizer and, 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 and purveyor of, of a show on, uh, particularly to support Lenten. So ladies and gentlemen, snap it up for Amy. Oh gosh, thank you guys so much. This is a beautiful experience. Just feel really blessed to be here. And all of these are hard acts to follow. I'll do my best. The first one's called Blessings and Reservations. The sun warms my hips. All is not lost. All is not found. Chewable vitamin C streams through my system, attacks the dreaded virus. Water lilies cloud the surface of the bath. Clouds in my mind, storms. Deep down, deep down, we are all monkeys. Avocado on my skin, rainbows in my mind, on my hand. Still dreaming, rain or shine. Feel reality in my bones. Transcend, dissociate. I know what you all did last summer. All the summers growing up. Even colors are only the repetition of light. The need for this is only an illusion. The mind nothing but a rainbow, creating dreams that seem real. Translucent bees at the end of the season, full of light, working for the hive till their end, curling on the white bableya, they perish in the frost. 
the delusion of wanting anything except contentment, stillness, the breath of a beautiful new day, refresh my mouth, lip balm, lavender, hibiscus, mint tea, fractured woman girl soothe for now. Do we dare create our days out of hair, clothes, books, music, food, flowers, but only need to breathe to feel still? This next one's called Still Point. Thank you. We are gentle farmers at last. The anger helps me peel the ginger. We construct languages around concepts of time, things that have been completed in the past, clue perfect, around philosophy and war, love and heretics. To create beauty in a time of war breaks the heart wide open. Joy remains, persists, rides butterflies, wins. Living among new encyclopedic fiber highways of the mind. Anything can be found in the new jungle of robots. What is want for freedom, water, a place to live? What more can we ask of a life than to be blessed? Bob Dylan sings about long gone highlands, long gone prairie, forest, fields. There is a joy in being kind to all beings, all energy. I charge this day with love and light, hugs and prayers and the good trouble fight. Incense, hibiscus, selenite, holy sandstone from Monterey on my wrist, a green glass heart, a shell with a pearl, silver octopus. Lord help us, let us not become extinct, platypus. Green Nautilus. I love how the sun feels on my skin. What would the ballerina do with the Humpty Dumpty dance? Everything comes from deep down. I can't help but dance, feel the earth beneath my feet. When you listen to the music, it takes you somewhere. Follow your feet with the rhythm in your hips. Find it where it goes. The roots chase the water all the way down. Find the taproot and center. Grow up toward the sun, reach in all directions. Oh, Amy, Amy, what would the ballerina do with the Humpty <laughs> dance? <laughs> and there is a joy to being kind to all beings. That line just captures both those pieces and, and just, just how you see life. That's Thank brilliant, you. beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Give us Thank some you. love, guys. Give us some love, some encouragement. <laughs> wow. The anger yes. helped me peel. Yeah, the Amy. Yeah. It's like yeah. Well, Thank you. storytelling of life. Thank you. I love the details. Yeah. Yes. It comes out. It comes out. <laughs> Thank you. I, I do love that line. There's a joy to being kind to all beings. I think that speaks to your heart and who you are. Mm -hmm. A little, thank the little you. I know of you. That was well done. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank and you. Thank you for being here for the first time. I hope you will return. I, I know Sundays are tricky for you, so I'm grateful that you're here today. So thank you. All right. Up next, this is how we roll. And I, I'm gonna before I bring up this next person. I know Amy said it when she first came on. You know, a lot of people always say, "Oh, how do I follow that?" Man, there's you know, there's no following. We all have our brilliance and. Everyone can stand on their own words. I understand the sentiment, but you know, we're all here to hear each other and support each other and 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 you know, sometimes offer critique. You know, I always open to when people want to critique, but you know, take the mic with pride and 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 you know, you're you're following. Like Lantis said, we're about moving forward. Life's about moving forward. So yeah. you know, whatever the other person just did, they did. Now it's your turn to move forward and do your thing. So Take that spirit and 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 uh, when you take the mic today, so this uh, this young man that I'm going to bring up, uh, I go way back with him. This is the first time he's here tonight at the Inspired Poetry Corner, uh, my old vehicle, the Inspired uh, the Inspired Word Cafe, which I started when I was living in Western Canada, uh, in Kelowna. Uh, Mark was one of the guys that used to come out all the time. I always like to tell his story. Mark uh, uh, suffered a brain injury when he was younger. 
Um, he heard about the show at an organization that he used to go with to get support. And they told him about the poetry show and he came and, and he started reciting. This guy supposedly has a brain injury. He's a poet, musician. He still, I'm assuming he still recites from memory. It's just an amazing thing. And the thing I love about him is not just the story, the fact that when I was running this show, he became a part of it and he always showed up. Even if he wasn't reciting, he always showed up. So I, I just love him and I, I love that uh, we've reconnected through this vehicle. So anyway, let me uh, introduce my good friend, Mark. Hi, Raul. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mark Berluti. I write lyrical poetry and I play drums in a rock and roll band. My first poem is going to be called One Another. We are lunatics. You can't just see. You must admit wholeheartedly. Some just a little bit more than the others. Sometimes it might be your brothers. So like the others, they're left to wonder what you got to say to each other to actually reach out to one another. We are all, all we are all lunatics, no matter how hip. You have to cherish every last sip before you can even get a grip that this is your last trip. Hmm. Let the music in your heart play away. Play it every single day. Things will happen as they may. Okay, I'm going to move on to my next poem. It's called One Heart. There is you. Here is me. I got to say, I like what I see. When I ask myself if I deserve this loneliness, my best guess is Hoping for that first kiss from someone I miss has been my bliss, my love and tenderness. One heart is all I want. One heart is all I need. One heart is the only reason my heart bleeds. Thanks. Okay, uh, moving on. My next poem is called Angst. RCMP wanted to incarcerate me. Doctors wanted to commit me. My peers wanted to humiliate me. And my fears wanted to annihilate me. What the hell is going on, man? We are guilty before being presumed innocent. I don't know if you understand what they've done to us, man. The system has failed. It's been said before. And nothing has been done. We still live for those horrors that leech off everyone. I've had my moments in the sun. And what can I say? I've had my fun. Now it's time to get serious. Then I'm done. I played the game. They're not anymore. Only, only God knows what they have in store. They can lie behind those eyes and all I can see is their demise. My father's sadness is nothing compared to my madness. Like a pawn in chest, I lay my angst to rest. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well done, Bob. Thanks. Thank you so much for, for connecting again, getting to hear your poetry and sharing your life with us. And you slowed down. Yes, slow down. I got, I got a couple more. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Knock yourself out. Why not? Yes, You're an you old all. friend. You're an old friend. Love you, man. Love you. I love you too. Cool. Okay, man. This one's called Enough. I said what I said. I did what I did. Now all I can do is just shake my head. I can trip out forever knowing once we were together. Pretty sure I've smoked too much when I asked my plants, is this enough? You were there when times were tough. You were there, you had the right stuff. Enough, enough, enough. I miss you this much. I miss the ambiance when you were around. I miss the nights we'd play on the town. Strings ringing, people singing, drums rolling, and beer just a flowing. I can dream my life away on into another day. So on we play, on we play, mm. on we play, on we play. Okay, my last, just to wind this up, thank you for listening. And uh, this is my last poem. It's called In the End, My Friend. And this goes to, out to all of you. Now, I'm not proud of many things I've said and done, but I want you to know I'm not out to prove myself to anyone. I just take my, my life as it comes. And in the end, my friend, what's done is done. We can't bring back yesterday's, doesn't matter what we do or say. So if we all just live for today, everything will work out in the end, my friend, anyway. Memories we share are beyond compare. What I'm really trying to say to you is you've been a fine, fine, fine friend. So remember wherever you go, I've got your back any day, anytime, anywhere, in the end. Thanks, guys. I love you. Wow. Oh, Mark. That was so dope. 
Thank you. You know how I feel about that poem and it, I haven't heard it in so long. Um, it's just so good to hear you again, friend, and see you. It's so good. It, it, you, you know, you just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I got goddess bumps right now. Bumps. You're a special man. You've all, you're special to me. And, and, you know, I used to get a lot of props for what I did with the inspired word, but it was people like you that, that helped that, that helped us, we we built that together. And you were a big part of that. You were a big part of that. So I'm just grateful to see you, my friend. I'm just so grateful and, and to hear your words. Thank you for coming. Thank you Come very again. much. Come again. Thank you. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Wonderful. Yeah, give him some love, guys. This is the first time here. For yeah, him. hard. And I don't know how much Zoom we uh, reach out good. to him. You know, he's a... He, like he's, you know, he's a poet and, a, and a, he plays music and, you know, Mark's open to friendship. So reach out if you, if you like him, get to know him, invite him to some of the other rooms, uh, you know. Wonderful, but, Mark. Yeah. Thank you very much, are you everyone. On, are you on Facebook, uh, Mark? Yeah, I'm on SoundCloud, too. If you stay on SoundCloud, you can hear all my poems and all my, all my songs. I, I don't, I'm not sure how to, I have trouble navigating. It's an app. You have to get the app. Well, Mark, put your put your information in in the chat box if like how, you know how to reach you, and and then you guys can connect. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. reach out to him. He's, Mark is a good soul. He's just he's a good, gentle man. I also have this thing about uh, uh, so. the institutional thing. I'll talk to you about. It. I'm involved. I'm involved. Like yeah. totally. You guys can take that offline. All right. Sure. Uh, all right, let's go now. It's just that we're getting late and I want to get through everyone. And I want people to have their full time to, to really have their experience, particularly on this special day with Lantern as our future. Uh, this young man that I'm going to bring up, I have not seen him in a while because I, I took a break from the Zoom room. So um, when he reached out to said he wanted to definitely be here for Lantern, I was like, definitely. So uh, many of you know him. So it's been a while since I've heard his words. So I'm looking forward to, to get, snap it up, clap it up. The D. Are you there, D? Uh, unmute yourself. There he is. I see the face. The floor is yours, Mr. Allen. I had to be here for a lantern carrier. I love his work like everyone here does. So let's give it up one more time for LC. <laughs> Only he can write those, those incredibly spiritual lines. I'm only going to do one poem for five minutes today. And this is my first time here. And that poem happens to come from my new and sixth book, Rusty Gallows, Passages Against Hate. Mm. From pages 77 and 78 in the book, this is called Out Front. I am grateful for the arch roof above my head, the twin rafters with the twin lights holding it in place, the faux walls surrounding me, the two windows with the two Venetian blinds down and shut at all times, the red brick, the red brick flow below my feet, the wooden shelves full of books and movies, the VHS by themselves and DVDs and clear totes, the Keats of mattress I sleep on, the melatonin to help me sleep, the vegan food in my fridge, a meat-free zone, the fruit and vegetable juices I savor, the filtered water I drink mode and tap shit, the hardcover journal notebooks and Roller point pens I use to express myself. The shower I use, even though I'm a bathtub man. The Hewlett Packard laptop computer aiding creation of the once and future poetry volumes. The Samsung TV and VCR DVD player combo. The little house in East Oakland I call home. The vast collection of political slogan t-shirts I wear the convictions of my heart on my chest. Sometimes antisocial, always anti-racist, remains a personal favorite, but being black is not a crime. 
gets me the most love on the street. But most of all, I am grateful for the bus drivers, the firefighters, the restaurant delivery drivers, the subway train conductors, the laundrette clerks, the grocery store workers, the farmers market workers, which I happen to be one, the doctors, the nurses, the paramedics, the pharmacy workers, the protesters for the rights of all black lives, the dead and the living, the mutual aid collectives, giving food, water, medicine, and household items to the people living hand to mouth during this goddamn pandemic and long before. All the heroes out front in our service, seeing to our immediate survival needs, they could use the praise. And you don't need superpowers to be a hero. Just be there out front for us. Oh, D. And that poem was called Out Front, which is one of two poems in the book that are like my, it's my attempt at what is called expressive writing, also known as free writing, where mm. you sit down, you write a poem in the moment, and you don't stop for proper grammar, proper pronunciation, nothing. You just write what you right. feel yeah. right there. And, and that's what. Out front, and out front was just that kind of poem. Mm. And out front is featured in my sixth and new book, Rusty Gallows, Passages Against Hate, now available from Vagabond Books, From This Mic to Your Ears. Can you hold that up again, D? Sorry, D. Can you hold the book okay. up again? I love the cover. Is that a covered bridge, an old? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually an old. It's an old covered bridge, mm -hmm. but it's in a crumbling, dilapidated state right yeah, now. Okay. But it was also the site of six lynchings that took place in the early 20th century. Okay. One in 1918 and one in 1942 mm -hmm. of Black folks mm -hmm. in Shibuta, Mississippi. The bridge still stands down there. It is one of the it is one of the last vestiges of old South racism that haven't been torn down yet. Well, mm. looks like Mother Nature might be taking care of that soon enough. I hope <laughs> so. If not, people need to take action and see to that bridge's destruction because that's a symbol of the old South that we could do without. So uh, we can put that kind of racial violence behind us. I agree, brother. I agree. Thank you so much for the powerful piece. Uh, uh, thank you. It's always good to hear you, D. Um, it's been a while since we chatted. We should get caught up sometime soon. Enjoy the holidays, y'all. You too, D. You too, brother. All right. That was uh, the one and only D. Allen. Um, I know many of you love him. Uh, I remember... I can't remember which show it was. I don't know if it was Eurekin or uh, Umesh uh, when Diane Ward did one of his pieces. So yeah, he's a you're a brilliant you're a brilliant uh, brother. Love your love your passion and your energy. All right, and that was his first time here. And D, you're always welcome to come back. I'll, I'll keep inviting you. So up next, uh, a returning regular now, uh, Scott. You have the mic, my friend, to share your pieces with us. Well, I'm going to do, uh, I was going to combine this with another one, but I just did. Yeah, you just did. <laughs> a little while ago, earlier today. And just before knowing I was going to go on, I reread it and I decided it needs to stand on its own. It's new, but uh, I'll have to, I guess there'll be a series coming out of all this. This is called Yesterday's Problems. Subtitled... Well, it's a quote from W.H. Horton, Habit Forming Grief, Mismanagement, and Pain. One, rain falls, naming fades, poisoning in the air. Mobs, explosions. Dr. King, Malcolm, quote, I told you so, unquote. Gaunt farmers grasp plows, soil, Dreaming. Two, I wanted to be paleontologist. 
how knowing, digging, brushing, shifting, seeing. What if I were transitioned into desert, field, city block dug into dragon bones? I remained in school learning. Children of all ages simply don't know. Three, quote, the old neighborhood WPPR betrayal, quote. As I realized the new betraying I saw, the sky darkened a shade of dark blue. Four, contentment. Somewhere among an old house, a dreamed neighborhood, next terms insurance bills. Money runs out before wealth, life before desire. In the photograph, a child is reading, chanting, leave her be, she will be. Well, I think I've got about 20 seconds to say that um, matter is energy. This is what the featured reader said. And when I see a coat, other people see a coat. I see a part of a ritual, which is to be the delivering, the acquisition, possible cleaning, repair, and delivery of that coat as part of a spell. The ritual is part of a spell The end, in literal terms, because matter is energy. The universe, matter is not separate from spirit. And the end result of that, of that spell is that a person will be better insulated, protected from the elements than they would have been without that coat. I don't, I don't see that coat. See what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for the, the poetry and, and uh, the philosophy, the hint of life. Yeah, because everything is connected, isn't it? And energy can never be destroyed. So give him some love, guys. Give him some love. Thank you, Scott. Um, like I said, your voice is always welcomed here. Uh, your insight, as I said, everyone's experiences of value. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah, Scott. Yeah. Right on. You know, thank you, brother. Thank you for. You know, anyway, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the reminders of life. Thank you for the reminders of all the experiences of life. It's not just the good. And I think sometimes we get trapped in just wanting to, you know, thinking life is only about good and beautiful. And, you know, this is why I've gotten to the point now. I don't, I just, I flow from one experience to the next, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or beautiful. I just go. So, all right. Up next, brand new author. She is working the London Trail promoting her book and still doing the Zoom rooms and being a supporter of the Inspired Poetry Corner. Guys, give it up for Neymar. Neymar, the mic is yours. I'm going to share a couple of poems. The first one from my book. Yeah, hold up your book a bit. Let's see the, the yeah. Before you start, how did you, like, the title? What, what prompted the title for you? What prompted the title? Um, probably because um, we were in lockdown. Um, I had two angsty teenagers in the house. My father had just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and then I went into menopause and it just felt like everything was coming at me at once. And you know, when you're kind of lost in your head and it just was like a thousand words coming at you at once and you're trying to make sense of it all. And I think that's where the title sprung mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, share some po beautiful poetry. That's <clears throat> interesting Thank title, you. but the poetry inside is beautiful. So do your thing. Clocking out mum. Shared parting words at the door, choked by the breach of my heart. The sun about to depart. Life in a case on the floor. A fresh start in the far east away from acquaintance with the clandestine, paths where the soul deviates, chances decline, 
no more stop and search on the street. A blank canvas to sagely brocade, a leap I, I never could take, the familiar too high a stake, where nobody knows your name, no record to reject or shame, into the sun and out of the shade. I love you, mum, smiling as you waved. You made the choice that saved from incarceration or the grave. The hurt I tenderly forgave, muted loss etched on my face, my shift done. The world's heavens are closed, stored love has no place to go. A mother reminisces on the child she misses, a thought in the absence imposed. Thank you. Beautiful. And my second poem is one of my more recent pieces, uh, Ambling Through the Ages. Weaving through the dusty narrow alleyways of old Medina, old crenulated walls flank us on either side. Majestic arches crest overhead as we duck dive. The lump and rough facades whispered exchanges of the colonial era. An assortment of technicolor stalls to entice the eyes, where the aroma of sweet musk oud and scorched lamb cosset and comfort like a mother's gentle hand. The worn Moorish doors that imply people of a smaller size. We potted through the glazed ceramics, taking pictures as we marveled at their craft, paled by women offering henna tattoo art, fingers interlaced, as our eyes hint at the words of our lips. A town born out of imperial aspirations, the Carthaginians, Romans, and Goths seem to linger in faded abandoned forts, their scarred walls and defunct cannons facing the ocean. Beneath the sleeping wrought iron kerosene lamps, we scurried through the meandering maze, timelessly lost in the veins of burnished alleyways, our dust-infused breaths eternal in love's ancient camp. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Neymar. I just love the imagery that comes with your poetry and just some of the lines that, you know, like I said, I always look for things that speak to the person and the hurt I tenderly forgave. I, just the imagery from that one line from the first piece that you wrote, right? Being able to tenderly forgive someone for whatever transgression. That To me, that's a very powerful and speaks to a lot of who you are. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, thank you guys. Uh, give it, let let give give Nema a little bit of love. You know she needs the love this week as she <laughs> continues to slug and pushing her book and thank and you. you know trying to, to to get the word out. So give us some inspiration for the week. But thank you for being here. Thank you once again for always supporting us. All right, let's continue on. Uh, so honored that uh, this woman is uh, here for the first time. I've I've seen Diane in in many other Zoom rooms, and I, I just love her spirit. I love her gentleness and the way she carries herself, and I love the fact she always wants to share other other artists' uh, words. I, I think that just speaks again to 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 the person in her heart. Anyway, this woman needs no introduction because she's known Diane. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's a beautiful <laughs> intro. This piece is called The Lion and the Sheep. Born a lion, I believed myself to be a sheep. I roamed for millennia in a desert of delusion, enjoying the ignorance of separation. Bleating, bleating, my fate seemingly I made unusual noises, 
wandered in a jungle of despair until one day I heard a roar within a streak of light, felt an inner energy which broke my chain. A great lioness chanted my glory, holding a magical mirror to my face. I saw myself like a fellow comrade in the blazing temple of supreme love, rediscovering the voice of my ancestors. I roared with the power of innumerable lions, dancing with the joy of a thousand prodigals. Oh, did I forget to mention this was written by your <clears throat> your feature. Lantern Carrier. <laughs> I can't write like that. <laughs> uh, you're too much. Now, for me. <laughs> I will dare to read. I will dare to read something I wrote now. Okay. Okay. Bring it down. Okay. We talk about love and how we try to find it and that journey. So I'm going to read this quickly. All right, so I can hear some of the other people. This is called Play Domino, Chess, Parcheesi, Ludo, or Go. Trusting a world with some doubt, fear, no hope, yet hope, is called trepidation, I think. Angry at myself for believing in people, frustrated with life lessons myself and stumbled chances, anxieties with health, no crystal ball to the future, no tea leaves to read. Isn't it so true? My first kiss with you is all that really matters. Being loved and giving, taking and building, backward steps forward towards forward thinking, taking pride in being comforted, listening sometimes and hearing selectively and preaching, assuming and nurturing, truly only because our big bang in resounding in the whole universe was because my first kiss with you is all that matters in the cosmos. We felt that sweet Big bang. Oh, that was only reality that mattered. Chain reaction, physics and crumble, attempt, reapply, savor and gloat over the win, shrug or pretend to shrug off the loss. First move, chess or checkers, dominoes and love. And through life's journey, all the sights and the sighs and the joys and the challenge and love and disappointment and reconciliation reconsidering and being flexible, literally and figuratively. There was no holding back in that first kiss. Subsequent kisses didn't disappoint. When you're cornered, you really can't go anywhere. You enjoy the capture. Before you play the board, play power games, genderless, all moves are powerful pieces. Each on this lie is played strategically. So love is the pawn and kisses erase all points rule. Same state matches likes and dislikes are common. Connect the dot connectors, not without that first kiss. The first kiss was part of the journey's ticket, the long ride, the unknown, the life smack to shared lives and built a beautiful another was all that what what still really really mattered was that first kiss you may have to make many oh that's life that's living that's risking that's chance that's like turning to love you win to learn you matter the consequences there are books written about your moves my moves strategically when to apply that first kiss whatever strategy you know you strategize through life loves and woes Trust in that first kiss, the ticket to the journey of love, life, and shatter trepidation each time. Please move. Thank you. Oh, oh, Miss Ward, you. 
Oh, that no. first kiss is all that matters. Oh, that's just. <laughs> I don't have to ask you to unmute. You should be unmuted and like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Diane. Oh, Miss Ward. So lovely. Oh. That first kiss. Oh, that first kiss. Huh. Took me back to Vina, Junior at Hollywood High, California, remembering Michelle Johnson. Mm -hmm. Oh, Diane. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Oh. Tender, intimate, delicate, and charming, and so well put. Yeah. <laughs> Bring back right. memories. Brings back memories. <laughs> yes. Thank that you for the beautiful shout. Memories, so. <laughs> Well done, Diane. So good to have you here. Like I, said, like I said, first time having you here. I hope you'll come back. I'll, I'll invite you again. Um, that's just such a beautiful reading. And I love the way you honored our, our future Lantern by reading it and go, oh, by the way, this is Lantern's work. <laughs> uh, well done, well done, well done, well done. Okay. Wow. I need a moment. Wait one second. Hold on. I'm still stuck in, in, in high school for a second, so. All right, up next, another East Coaster. Uh, this young man, I don't get to see enough, but I, I love his stuff. Um, he's a host of, on, I believe you're still hosting your show on Wednesday nights with uh, The Word is Right and uh, all the other things that he does anyway. Many of you know him uh, 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 as just a, a performer, that knows how to spin words and phrases and imagery and puts it in this beautiful package and then he delivers it with such zest. Anyway, guys, snap it up for Nick. Good Hello to see there. you, brother. It's good to see you too, yeah. Um, it's been kind of crappy the last month or so for me. Lost my job, that was not fun. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Or maybe not, or maybe not. Yeah. I mean, I got laid off on my day off, so I mean, the little plot line of Friday, that's the joke I make about it and everything like that, so, you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's go on to my poetry. So, this is all, like, new stuff that I'm going to be doing. These are, like, the 5 a.m. thoughts that I have. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> First off, a bunch of haikus. The Art of Battle. A Slow Dance with the Roses. Petals cut too deep. Haiku. Swords clash with armor. Bodies wilting like the weeds. Dying into earth. Haiku. Cherry blossoms bloom. Awaken hibernation. Sun blocked by thunder. Haiku. Cold chill of winter. Touch of depression on the lips. Purple death ensues. And then the last haiku before we go to the peace. Peace to all people. Slogan despised by warlords. Peace spends time, not coin. And the last one of my 5 a.m. thoughts. Automation is becoming a problem. AI is stealing art in a form of piracy that makes pirates from all universes angry. Art and image taken by machines driven by soulless human hands. Bow down to them if you dare. Know that this is the beginning. They are coming for the drawers. Next, the comedians, next, the painters, then the writers, along with everyone else. In an age of disinformation, deceiving is believing the lie of a disguised truth. AI is not perfect. It doesn't mean it's in the works. It is best to kill the artificial symbiote before it festers. Say no to artificial intelligence and say yes to art and images. Keep and rein in the money and the power in the pencil, the pen, and the brush. Nick, Nick, Nick. Amen. Amen, Nick. Yay. Nick. 
you for saying that, brother. You need to get a job yeah, where you Nick. can stay up and, and be, at, be at five o'clock all the time. Nick. <laughs> right? <laughs> he, he spends time, not coins. Was that that line? Uh, peace spends time, not coins. Peace. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Okay. I well can work with that line. That's, uh, <laughs> It's got my head spinning. Mm -hmm. As you read that line, I, I, I started penning a, a, a thought of, that I'm going to work on. Only the first word of a poem is present. All the rest of the poem is in the past. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts right there. That's, That's facts. That's what that, yeah, that, that line, that, 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 it was like, boom. Oh, I have to write about this. Well done, Nick. I always love hearing your your words. I do, you know, uh, yeah, the insights, and yeah, AI is. I was I was just watching a documentary about AI uh, the other day, Friday or yesterday, I can't remember. Yeah, we need to be careful with that because we're the ones in charge of it. So, oh yeah, I agree with that. I it was because it, like the the Lenza app and everything like that. And I was learning about that and everything because I was like everyone was doing. It. I'm like, what the hell is this stuff and everything? I learned like what that was doing and i'm like oh that's definitely not good yeah and everything so it's like that's not cool Still I, can't remember, work. I can't remember the app right now but uh, i was watching like so watching this documentary and this guy was uh you you could put uh you could put free phrases in in the in the in the in the window and then the ai will generate an image from it so I put yeah. a couple of things of, of some of my lines from a couple of my poems in it. And it was just like, interesting what, what it depicted. And then if you put in something from the Bible, it, it, it almost, I was wondering if, if, if any sort of dogma has worked its way into this AI and the stuff that it pulled up, it's like, so I'm just sitting there. This was a couple of days, no, yesterday, I think, or yesterday I was playing with it. And I'm like, man, we need to be careful with this. This is... This could be quite interesting for our humanity. I mean, look how social media has worked out. So anyway, mm. we'll take that. We'll, we'll have to have that conversation. Anyway, Nick, thank you for being here. First time here. Love having you. You know how I feel about you, brother. I hope you come back. And you have to trust. There's a reason why all things happen. So there's probably a, you know, every crisis is an opportunity. So there's probably a greater opportunity waiting around the corner for you, brother. So thank you all. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And if you ever need to talk, I'm here. Just reach out. All right. Up next, former feature. Uh, I love the elegance uh, of the of this woman. And uh, like she said to me, I cannot not be here. Lanton and I go way back. So put your hands together <laughs> for Leslie Constable. Leslie, my friend, good to see uh -oh. you. Oh, I'm so honored to be um, part of this event. Uh, which honors Lantern Carrier. Okay, so um, the first poem I'm going to read is um, a collaboration Lantern Carrier urged me into doing because I was not sure of, of I've never done it. So I'm just going to, um, this, yeah, this was quite some time ago. So the dual title is Images of Love, the Setting Sun. The setting sun seals the kiss of day, evening the coy lover we are wrapped in, enwrapped at intent, belief suspended mid-motion. All that we know in this moment is love, and in this moment of stillness waiting for the next, we move towards the inevitable, inevitable, that the day ends and waits the new dawn. Night cloaking us, the intent to only in this one moment hover between these worlds, that of day and tonight, us in love, the joy radiating, transcending, us transcending as us together, upward, ever upward into the higher reaches of air to meld, as does the seductive scent of night jasmine wafting up and joining with sky. Above, the trees stand guard, the overarching canopy there as shelter, protecting us, stand guard. The birds alight momentarily and swiftly move onward on their way. 
that we are in this moment in the embrace of all that which is holy of this I am certain. You know my hand as I know yours, joined as we pass through these fragrant gardens. The night birds nesting hidden deep inside our thoughts sing to the old ones hovering near to us always as we walk. So there, remembering the ancient songs of love they knew as we know now, sung to all who walk these paths, the paths leading to nowhere, leading to somewhere until the dawn breaks, glorious in its excess. I shall meet you at the river, and placing my foot carefully, steadying myself as we lower ourselves down into the small ponga to sit you at my side, dear one, and we cherish each moment rocking on the gentle movement of the river as it carries us down. Sitting beside you close, we as one wrapped by love, wrapped in my love, I rock as do you on the cradle of night until the sun once again emergent shines in the heavens. So the second one is, um, the wind is a prayer. And this is about writing poetry. The sun is a prayer as it comes through the morning windows in my room, touches the tablecloth on top of the table. The flowers there in their vases, the table awaits me to sit and with thought, in thought, create words. The miracle of thought into action taken up by my hand, the pen to write the words before me that formed in my mind, the words that are symbols of all that we know going back in time, the words that formed on the lips of the old ones, the beloveds, and going back further to their beloveds. It is the wind, a prayer as it touches me as I walk, walks with me, against me sometimes and pushes, pushes me to go places I hadn't thought of going. Maybe I didn't want to go, but the wind, a stubborn companion, will ask me to go where I wouldn't, where I maybe fear, where I need to go to see more and know more of the world, of this my world. The water is a prayer as I look at it, as I watch it. As it touches me, if I place myself in it, the water moving is a prayer that courses its way by, that touches us, that gives us so much we travel on, we play in that which connects us, all parts of the world traveling through the land to the sea. We know where it goes. It goes to source, sourced, source, it is life. The earth is a prayer that we walk on in which we plant our seeds, the food that gives to us that, that in the end takes us into it and we sleep. Then finally, um, this is a rather celebratory poem um, about a friend who was having a hard time. And I wrote this um, uh, to send to her and to honor her. It's called, Let Me Sing to My Friend. Let me sing to my friend the song of her life. Let me sing to her that her body is a temple if in this moment it is forgotten and to remember this when she is afraid. Let me sing to my friend that she was born protected to know, to understand that there is a beautiful blue light surrounding her at all times as she walks, as she rests or sleeps as she talks to me and to you, as she sings her song to us. Let me sing to my friend and ask, excuse me, and ask for her reverent silence, to be silent and still so as to hear far off the birds singing in the meadow. Let me sing to my friend to whistle in the dark, to not forget each day, to look up and keep her gaze fixed on the sky. I sing to her of bees, <laughs> and to think of them as they go from flower to flower, blessing each one. I sing to her to see far off in the fields the horses with their foals or the spring lambs, and remember this new life as it is revealed to her each spring. I sing to her to see in each dying branch of the trees in autumn the bud of new life curled up and sleeping, waiting for the renewal of spring. I sing to her to tell her that there is the dark, but also the light. Let me sing to my friend that the sound of her heart beating is the sound of the angel's wings in her ear, whispering to her at each breath. 
I sing to her that she is loved. And we can hold each other in this, and we can hold with this, hold in this, hold with each other, even when apart. And when in the dark, know we are together and not fear, and fear cannot have us, for we are in the embrace of song, the song of our lives. So that's all. Thank you. Elegant, inspiring, intoxicating. Oh, the earth is a prayer we walk on. What a line. If only we could remember that. Mm -hmm. That last poem belongs in a, in a card that people can read on a regular basis, particularly people that are struggling with life. That's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. All right. You know, it, it, you know it, it's elegant, but the words, you know, there's another word I wrote here that I can't even make out right now, but the voice, the way you, you know, it, it's, it's almost so surreal in, in how you present it, but yet if you listen to the words, they're so poignant and, and, and cutting. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love her up, guys. Love her up. The incomparable Leslie Constable, guys. Well done, well done. Leslie, well done. incredible. All right. Yes. You cannot have us. Yes, glad you were here. Glad you came to honor our feature and honoring us with your words. That was a brilliant reading, so. All there right. Like what... Three people here have collaborated with and Leslie's one of them. Yeah. It was a joy to collaborate. Oh, Lantern, you collaborate with everyone, even if we're not collaborating with you. <laughs> You're just that guy, Lantern. <laughs> we collaborate. I collaborate with you. This is why I want to have chats with you one on one. <laughs> right? You're a brilliant man. But that's great. Though. I'm glad people that uh, have worked with you wanted to come and honor you today. I don't know. Yeah, it's really good to see that I chose well. Oh, someone just scored, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, you heard the voice right after Leslie. The uh, He's got that distinctive voice. You know, when I go to the cafe, that's one of the things I listen for is Gustav's voice and then the passion. So many of you have seen him before. So I will let the man, the hat, and his words speak and honoring our feature today by honoring himself and being part of our gifts of today. Gustav, Mike is Greetings here. Greetings, Raul, Lantern Carrier. We were brilliant. This is called Radical Self-Expression. Walk in the turbulence of Finnegan's wake while hypermaterialism's foundations shake. Wormholes riddle the holographic universe at in Arcadia ego as revealed in verse. Logos, codons, DNA inspired, in flesh-born form, no longer mired, the truths in our designer genes, if you know what all this means, come home to Black Rock City's conflagration, a burning man, our initiation into a world of infinite imagination, recapitulating the spark of all creation tis true as above so below we are all stars watch us glow like beacons through man's twilight amidst the chaos lies our delight the kingdom of heaven is in our hearts our souls are mapped on galactic charts so let's get down and astronauty it's time to shit or get off the potty drink from the void the elixir of immortality evolve the one from the duality to realize the monoism of the trinity no longer denying our own divinity achieve the alchemical self immortal one giant leap through the galactic portal of future memory of what we always have been angels of light, free of all sin. The second piece is called For Busboys and Poets. This is for poets and busboys lost in this land of misfit toys, hungry, rabid, roaming the streets, seeking sustenance, living on beats, sharing wisdom learned the hard way to find the light of a brand new day where love is seen as the highest reason, greed and Tyranny recognized as treason, living in truth and bathing in beauty, our bond to one another, the highest duty, living and doing as we will, every second a new thrill, peace and love, our currency, 
in control of our own destiny. After so long waiting, finally free. This is my vision. I hope you can see they may come to power in this nation, but they can never own our imagination. Thank you. Just, uh, the kingdom of heaven is in our hearts. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's in all of us. Beautiful words, my friend. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here again. Thank you for supporting Lantern, but thank you for bringing your gifts and your words to, and your passion, and your passion to, to, to the show. It's always good to see you. Give it up for Gustav, guys. Give him some love. Let the Magnus man knows. Yeah. All right, we're getting close to the end, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bravo, bravo. Getting close to the end. I always tell people, you know, it's, it's easy to be here at the beginning, and, you know, and, and you know, but to, to stick it out, this is a practice of love. Love is, is work and it, it takes time and patience to, to really embrace all of love. And when you get to the end of a show, people are like, oh, it's so long. But no, this is this is part of the practice of staying in the love and being here at the end for, for each other. So, all right. Uh, <clears throat> this gentleman is a first time to my show, to the Inspired Poetry Corner, but I've had the honor of listening to him at the Eurekan uh, a number of times. And um, when Lantern and I were talking about the people he wanted to invite and all this stuff, I said, we definitely got to see if Element could come out. So I'm so glad he agreed to do it. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't heard this brother before, you're in for a treat. Anyway, Element, Elemental the Poet. The mic is yours, my brother. Are you there? Indeed. Peace and blessings, poets and family. Uh, I apologize. I won't be on camera today. Uh, I just had a procedure done and right now my eyes are black. Um, um, to every poet who came before me and after, I truly, truly appreciate your energy. You truly make poetry that much more enjoyable. Um, I believe that, you know, we we all consume poetry in different ways um, and it it transforms us, you know, just as we transform the matter of words into poems, those poems transform us into something much more. And I appreciate all of you for being plugged into that energy and staying connected to it. Uh, Lantern Carrier, you know, you're you're one of the, the dopest poets of our generation. And I appreciate you for always staying connected to it. Um, I am gonna share a piece, um, a shorter piece that um, was written in a space of our community um, and doing the things that, that we do. Um, before, I, I just also wanna say to Raul, thank you for your space, for your energy, um, for your creative genius. Um, since coming onto our community, you have definitely made your presence felt, your energy felt, um, and it is pure and it's magical, and I appreciate you. Um, I'm gonna share this and I'm gonna get out of y'all's way, <laughs> um, but I, I truly appreciate all of you for, for being here, supporting Lantern, supporting poetry. This is a new way forward. <clears throat> How do you spell change? not trinkets that coin phrases like penny for your thoughts or how you make a dollar when all you have is hope resting on heavy hearts and bills whose weight parallels gravity. Make it hard to sleep. Sometimes all you can do is pray for monetary miracles granted by demons that see nothing wrong with making America the great homeland of brutality again where families died trying to save babies from masses footsteps around confined quarters with nickel-plated bravado manifested as toxicity. Literally, a virus from house carcinogen, poisonous, primitive thinking turn piracy democracy with old world policies when wars were waged for much less they emerge victors spoiled soil of equilibrium for aurelian dreams with king midas envy at the cost of soul underfoot ground into progress 
that's now $1,700 an ounce. And last time I checked, we, the 99%, don't collect resources in mass amounts for prosperity of self. Hidden in bureaucracy, made hatred heir to ill-gotten fortunes of life insurance policies, paid out with IOUs that sound like minority college admission increase. Check the box, because we don't speak generational wealth fluently. We speak lemonade, devour our sour sentiments in acidic solvents, better known as disruptive behavior that blisters summer offensively, make Beyonce out of sour seasons. Now we ate shit, transform this vile, maniacal laughter to star power. In every flash, Wakanda lives. Be fearless, be free, and live because the revolution lives. You. Hmm. Appreciate it. Peace. The revolution lives. The revolution is televised, brother. The revolution is through these Zoom boxes that we all share our poetry. That's a powerful piece, all of it. That's a powerful. It's, it's, it, the only thing missing was seeing you perform it. But I understand if you're, you know, you obviously just had something done. But that's just listening to the word. I actually put the, I, I pick up my pen so I could try to capture lines from everyone that's reciting that resonates with me. And I purposely put it down. I just wanted to take in everything without being distracted that's a powerful piece well done i, I really can't thank you all enough truly truly elemental.com is where you can plug in with me please do um listen i i truly believe that similar to lantern i am a being of energy the folks who know me know i'm all about energy the energy that i bring to every time you hear me is because of the energy that you bring to me it is all that I can do is share it back with you. Thank you very much, folks. You share it. Thank so you, my brother. But please look after your eyes. Look after yes. your eyes. After You're stunning you. and immaculate as always, but look after your eyes. Yeah, we need your eagle vision, my brother, in this world. So, yeah, come back again and, and yeah, stay tuned. We, we got stuff to do in the new year. You, me, Lantin, and a few others. So, indeed. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, powerful stuff. Like I'm, I'm, I, I don't think my my goddess vibes are, or goosebumps are gonna go away anytime soon. So, all right. Um, I had this next uh, person coming up was a former feature. I'd taken his name off the list because I didn't think he was coming today. Or I didn't think he thought he was coming, but then he came back, and I could not. Uh, I had to find space for him. So anyway, guys, uh, I think we featured him uh, was that last month. We featured this man last month, and now he's here to to support a, a feature this month. Uh, um, scientist, a, a man of the world, he's done many different things. But to me, the most important title I hold for him, I, I call him brother. He's a friend, and I, I do genuinely, genuinely and sincerely love this man. I love the way he thinks. I love the way he sees, although we don't always agree with how we, we each other see but we appreciate and respect how each other see. And I think his voice is such a valuable one in this world today. Ladies and gentlemen, snap it up, clap it up for Richard. Thank you so much, my brother. Uh, at one point I thought I had a, a prior commitment, but I have uh, managed to free myself up from it. I have to say I have nothing but the utmost respect for you, my brother Raul, and our most most divine brother lantern carrier and i'm i'm going to break my own tradition in honor and respect of my brother lantern who is a selfless soul who gives so much to these people of the world and to the world itself i want to read and share a poem from a, a film a tennessee williams film um the night of the iguana a, a very spiritual film and one that is so how remarkable and there's a poem that's struggled through throughout the poem and at the very end of the film this poet is able to complete it and i offer this poem to you my brother i call it nano's poem from night of the iguana how calmly does the olive branch perceive the sky begin to blanch without a cry without a prayer, with no betrayal of despair. 
Sometime, while night obscures the tree, the zenith of its life can be gone past forever. And from thence, a second history will commence, a chronicle no longer gold, a bargaining with mist and mold, and finally, the broken stem, the plummeting to earth, and then an intercourse not well designed for beings of a golden kind, whose native green must arch above the earth's obscene corrupting love, and still the ripe fruit and the branch observe the sky begin to blanch without a cry, without a prayer, with no betrayal of despair. Oh, courage, could you not as well select a second place to dwell, not only in that golden tree, but in the frightened heart of me? To my brother, Lantern, to my brother, Raoul. Now, to my dear brothers and sisters, poets, I could not leave here without honoring you. And to you, I offer this, a fresh one of mine called the wine of time. We see the star by the dark embraced. We feel the kiss in its staccato trace. The lips that bless come together, then part. Each heart blessing has a stop and start. The eternal power of giving love can neither be measured below and above that we might stand, supposes earth, that we might weep, supposes mirth. The very star that lights our world is there amidst the darkness curled. The chance of embrace depends on separate, but longing does not require desperate. Your soul light shines so brilliant warm make you ever kept from harm. And my ever vigil sigil shines. Your very presence surpasses the wine of time. Mm. Thank you, mm. my friends. Thank you all. Your first poem was so, so beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. Carved in the edges of my own heart. Yeah. Beautiful poem. The second one is beautiful, but very different. So I love them both. Thank you, brother. Thank you so and much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> it's always a delight to hear you, Richard. Um, and 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 so well delivered. Thank you. Thank you for always honoring me and and your kind words. It means a lot. It means a lot for you to be here at the you know the end of the year as we wrap up the first of the Inspired Poetry Corner. So thank you. Thank you for the honor. All right, let's continue on. We're almost done, people. Um, I like to call Kin Folk Nation to the mic. Um, these two young people, Dia and Trophy, are two, and they're oh, look at my little grandson. But, uh, Dia and Trophy are two young people that I just love dearly from my old home in Kelowna, British Columbia. And um, they are the two principles of Kinfolk Nation. And I would love for you guys to share whatever brilliance you would love to share with us. Hey, Glory. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's truly an honor to be here. So I'll, off, I'll always start off with uh, just uh, to play the drum, just the sound, at least. Um, to say some of the things that uh, my, my, the words or the or, or the sounds that we may have may not be able to fully express, but because this holds a lot of memory, um, I hope um, to start off that way, honoring history and the future as well and now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
living in a dark art paradise oh yeah i'm living in a gangster's paradise oh yeah i'm living in, in the dark art paradise oh yeah I'm living in a gangster's paradise. Oh, yeah. I'm living in a dark paradise. Oh, yeah. I'm living in a gangster's paradise. Oh, yeah. I'm living in a dark paradise. Oh, yeah. Living in a gangster's paradise, oh, yeah. I'm living in a dark paradise. It's an interesting oh, thing, the darkness. Yeah. I'm living in a gangster's The time when we close our eyes and in some way go within. In a dark paradise, oh. Yeah. I was often scared of the darkness. Stars paradise, oh. Not because yeah. it did anything to me, I'm but I was blind to it. Paradise, oh. Yeah. I'm living in the gangster's paradise, oh. Yeah. I'm living in, in the dark paradise, paradise, oh. Yeah. I'm living in the gangster's paradise, oh. Yeah, I'm living in the dark. So to find paradise. my dark paradise, yeah, was a reminder that paradise, paradise is paradise, paradise, no matter, so, no matter what. Yeah. So I'm living in the dark paradise. I don't know if I should forgive myself for my fears, but I'm living in the gangsters paradise. They live inside me in a way that sometimes I don't know if they are separate anymore. In the dark paradise. Oh. Someone recently told me I'm living in you the can't bottle paradise. happiness on the journey to inner peace. Yeah. In the dark I don't really paradise. understand it fully, but it resonated with my heart in a way that I kept it paradise, oh. as a memory. Yeah. In the dark paradise, I closed my eyes. Yeah, I'm living in the dark. And I went inside. So, yeah, I'm living in, in the dark paradise. So, yeah, I'm living in the gangster's paradise. So, yeah, I'm living in the dark. Paradise, oh, yeah. I'm living in a gangster's paradise, oh, yeah. I'm living the gangster, the paradise, is seeking for peace, too. Yeah, I'm praying and hoping that in the actions that I do, I hope I yeah. finally get what I was looking for. Our paradise, oh. See, to me, the gangster is one who lives in the gangster's paradise. Oh. If a gang is a collection yeah. of people, in the dark just a new word for a group, but a particular type of group, I in the conclude that a gangster is one who lets the light shine in the group. In the dark paradise. Oh. So tonight, I. Yeah. I thank the universe for gangsters, introducing me to so, and to reconnect with a few gangsters. And living in a dark paradise, so oh, yeah. I'm living in a gangsters paradise, so oh, the saint and yeah. the sinner both pray for I'm forgiveness. In a dark paradise, so oh, yeah. I'm living in a gangster's paradise, so yeah. I'm living in the dark paradise, so yeah. I'm living in a gangster's paradise, yeah. Mind is just a prayer of peace, so yeah. Sustained peace. 
I'm living in a gangster's paradise. I hope that in my youth I could figure out what it is that we're supposed to do because some days life seems confusing. Yeah. I'm living in a gangster. And each confusion paradise. opens up a new space. Yeah. A new searching. A, a new discovery. So yeah. The things I used to admire yeah. now yeah. look a little different. Yeah. I'm living in the dark paradise. So yeah. I'm living in the gangsters paradise. So peace and love is something to treasure. So our paradise. I hope on your journeys you all find peace. Yeah. A peace that surpasses understanding. So, yeah. So I close my eyes. In the dark paradise. So, yeah. I'm living in the gangsters' paradise. So, yeah. I'm living in the dark paradise. So, yeah. Living in against us, so. yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so, so much. And uh, always a pleasure to be here to convene with everybody to see your lights really shine and, and, yeah. and everybody expressing their humanity in different ways, simply because of the different places that we are from and the different experiences we've lived and just the space for them to all live. Um, is a gift. It's truly a gift. So I thank you all for being. I just thank you all and roll once again. Thank always, you. we'll always be grateful for an opportunity and a moment to live. Yeah. yeah. And I just quickly, I want to say thank you for Lantern. Um, but I also want to give a special shout out to the woman here, the woman present, and especially, especially these beautiful Black ladies in the room with your presence, with your voice, with your faces, uh, being a young Black African lady myself, seeing you, uh, doing your art, sharing your spirit, it does a lot for me. So I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for yeah everything. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. And, you know, thank you for, for the words. Thank you for the harmony the grace, the serenity, the meditative connection to life, and just the power of the words that you both speak, not just in song, but in life. And thank you for being here. Every time I ask, you answer, and I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Thank you so much. I know it's early in Kelowna, but I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. And Lantern, I know, is grateful. Um, I love the way you guys just go off the top of your head, but it's always fitting to whatever we're doing. It's always fitting. This is why I keep inviting you. <clears throat> um, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the year of Inspired Poetry Corner. I was busy yeah, writing. Um, I wanted to say thank you to them. I mean, the voices are so beautiful, okay. so harmonious, so melodious. And the gentleman coming in between, uh, and they had it quite right. Even the kid looked cute, you know, very charming. <laughs> <laughs> his name, his name is Glory, and yeah, and Glory, you you can have another an, another adopted grandfather if you like. Lantern's yeah. a really good one. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be sending him some Christmas presents, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I I just wanted Thanks to say, say thank you to to Lantern for. <laughs> Just for so your, I'm not going to tell you why they're cheering, but you could figure it out. I think Ian is gone, so it was safe. But I just wanted to say thank you, Lantern, for, for, for you know, bringing up the caboose, the end of the year. We're in a time of year now where we're in the holiday seasons and many will practice Christmas and Kwanzaa and... <laughs> And, um, oh, geez, I just forgot the Jewish one. Just went right out of my head. Um, Hanukkah. Hanukkah, thank you very much. And all the other celebrations that, that, that go into this time of year, whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. 
it's like I was having a conversation with someone about God and, and they go, well, you know, God doesn't exist. I go, actually, God does exist. God exists because we say so. So it doesn't matter whether you can prove it or not. If we say so, that's how powerful we are. However you choose. But if you, if you understand that matter, and I went round and round with a leftist, they didn't get it. Matter well, and energy. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And energy, spirit. Well, I'm that's not going to get into it. Hold on, Scott. Just let me finish because I want to wrap this up. Um, whatever your belief is, it doesn't matter because no one can prove. I cannot prove whether God exists or does not exist. Doesn't matter. What matters is if we believe it and if it, whatever your beliefs encourages you, invites you to walk a way that's respectful and loving to each other to yourself, to me, that's what matters. So we could say energy, we could say God, we can call Bible, we can call the Torah, we could call the Quran, we call the noble truths, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they're all hopefully inspiring us to walk a human walk, a human walk that embraces the good, bad, ugly, and beautiful of life. I don't know what's to come after this. I do know one day I will take my last breath in this, the world of ego. And where I go from there, I don't know. That's also not my concern because that's not in my hands. I do believe I will continue on, not this I, this Mitsu that I walk around in is called Rawl. The essence of who I am, the creator, the universe, the timeless energy that is life, that permeates through all universes. Because to me, the Big Bang was just a door of something else closing to a window opening to this existence. But that's just my belief. So I want to thank you all for supporting our human experience. It's been a magical year. And having poets come and share their stories and share their experiences and to share their love, to share their fears, to share their anxieties, to share themselves is to me the magic, right? Our friend Zumkanto had his files all corrupted and now he's not sure he can get it back. But like I told him last night and I said it today, the poetry exists in you, it always has. The pen and paper are just tools that we use to capture it. And look how we all capture it. Look how we all share freely of our experiences. So it's not just the five minutes that we gather hoping to share a few lines. You're sitting here making the conscious choice to be here on a Sunday morning, to be here, not just for Lantern, but for you. The spirit of Ubuntu, I am because you are. That's what this life is about. This is what the inspired poetry is about. It's about us coming together and through the poetic expression of life, sharing our experiences. I wanna thank you for this magical year, for stumbling into this Zoom community that led to this. <clears throat> The Inspired Poetry Corner does not exist if you don't support it. You know, Amy's event does not exist if we don't support it. And all the other organizers that are putting on events, they don't have an event if we don't show up. So as we leave to celebrate with our loved ones, our families and our friends, remember, we are, our inner circle is our family and friends, but the outer circle is also our family and friends, our bigger family and friends. The mere fact that we live on this planet and we breathe the same air means we are all connected. So enjoy the holidays, however you choose to express it, however you choose to express your love for your divine creator, but most importantly, how you choose to express your love for yourself. It's like the human heart. It feeds itself first, it starts with you. The stronger you are, the stronger I am. The stronger I am, the stronger you are. If I eat, you eat.
I love you all. Lantern, my brother. Well, I must thank you. I must thank you. I mean, Elemental is very erudite and he expressed succinctly what I really wanted to say. I offer you my heart. Here we are a garden of love and uh, the fuchsias, the roses, the orchids, the tulips, the lilies, we all playing our part, singing different tunes, having different fragrances, but harmonizing as one garden of love. And that's magical. It's like an orchestra and, and the maestro and giving and receiving in this game of life is very important. We give and we receive, and it's an, both are necessary aspects of the soul. And I thank you, you provided a platform. I thank all my friends. I see so many loving faces who turned up uh, to hear me and to appreciate me and to offer their, their, their words of wisdom and encouragement. And uh, uh, my heart is very touched. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me just say Feliz Navidad and Feliz Año Nuevo, uh, including El Nino. <laughs> The, yes. the, the little boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you Dr. all. Faison. And, Dr. Yeah, Faison, I'll, I'll, we didn't hear Dr. Faison, but uh, he's a host and he's turned up. And I have mentioned you, Dr. Faison. I must mention you. He does oh, uh, yes. Queen's, yes, he Queen's Poetic Alchemy Collective, and he's dedicated his life to poetry. He's a doctor, medical doctor, and he's done so much. And I'm very, very happy to see him here today. I've said very little to him, but I'm so grateful, so grateful to him that he's come and to his uh, co-host, Steve, who is not here. So I want, I, everyone else, I think I express my thanks too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lantern. Thank you for those thank words. You. And now steal a line from one of our poets. The earth is a prayer we all walk on. Indeed. Remember that. Indeed. Indeed. I love you all. Have a blessed, blessed Sunday. Thank you for this experience. This is one for the books. I'm going to enjoy when I'm going through this and editing it, putting it together. I'll, I'll try to get it up by, by midweek, maybe even sooner, but I'm really going to enjoy listening, re-listening re to this one. This was so good for my soul today, my, my, my soul. So I love you all. Truly Thank love you. you. Thank Until you. we meet again, happy holidays to you all. Be safe. Be strong and be gentle with yourself. Peace. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Peace. Bye, bye. Bye, Glory. Bye. We'll connect bye. soon, guys. I will yes. talk, man. All right. Thank you so much, See you, Amy. Bye. See you guys. You See you, Doc. Bye. 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 Thanks so much. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thanks, Element. Beautiful. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Doctor. Have a great rest of the year. I will be back in the folks. new year, Doctor. Take care. Bro. Find All yourself right. at the New Eureka Poets Cafe, too. It's going yeah. down soon. Well, I got a, I got a few hours Real. to sign, sign up, up. tonight. Exactly. I have to actually put it in my phone. Get it, so. get it in there. I'll see y'all soon. All right, brothers. Peace. Peace. See you guys. <laughs>